No crack, Gromit. We've forgotten the crack. Arthur, what if neither of us want... No, fuck. Arthur, what if neither <laughs> one of them wants us? What if we have no parents anymore? We'll be organs. You mean orphans. Welcome to the Sunday Movie Marathon. I'm DW today. Oh, I was going to say that. I'm Arthur then. I'm Buster. Yeah. Get, get repped, mate. We're here. It's episode 88. I thought it was in 89, isn't it? 89. Movie podcast journey. It's 89. 89 in our movie podcast journey. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> I never uh, thought I would keep up with the number, to be honest. Uh, how I, yes, I have them written down. I just didn't do it. I just copied and pasted it over from my um, document in the, oh, the previous the episode, and I just forgot to change it. That's, that's why I fucked it's up there. 88 forever, um, baby. Cool. How are we? Yeah, doing good. We were just talking about how there's like nothing out on the moment. There's nothing out at the this, moment. The summer's been shit for films. It has. We've had the Black Phone, Thor, Elvis, Elvis, Minions. Oh, yeah. And that's it. Wow, a whole four movies. I feel like there was more. I don't Probably. Know. Who knows? Top Gun Maverick. That was, um, that that was, was one of the big ones. I think <laughs> legend has it. It's still showing. Yeah, I think it is, you know. I'm going to look yeah. it up quick. Yeah, do Chris that. was on the website <laughs> just yesterday as well. Sure, I'm not yeah. close enough to my mic for Yeah, number six, I'm uh, um, doing a double bill with both movies next month. What movies? The Ma- both Top Guns. <laughs> the Maverick oh, right. movies. What the fuck? Maverick, yeah, cool. I won't that. be going to that. <laughs> we I mean, all know my thoughts. On DC Super Pets and the Bullet Train movie. Oh, God, yeah. Bullet yeah, Train. Yeah, Top, Top Gun is still playing, but it's only got one screening, I think. Yeah, Hold on. That's, like, that's been in the theatres. But... I know. It has four screenings a day, depending on the day. Well, because it was advertised in, like, 2013 or whatever, it feels like it's been in the cinema for years. Yeah. You know? Yeah, Super Pets, that'll be something. Oh, my God. We're all excited like, to see um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson and what, Kevin Hart and Jamila some other Jamil people. or whatever. <laughs> the... Kate McKinnon, some Maybe, other. Yeah, those guys. Keanu Reeves as Batman. Yep. What? Oh, yeah, Lightyear's still playing as well. They're playing the Railway Children. Yeah, the new one. <laughs> Lightyear is on Disney Plus now. I just saw that. I'm That's... not going to watch it, but... I think I will. Just yeah, I'm there go. Oh my god, there's literally nothing on at the moment that we either haven't seen yeah. or doesn't look absolutely god-awful. Every time I check the cinema, like, I've been checking it every week and it's just been like the exact yeah. same for, like five movies that are shown for like a month Yeah, now. like you go to the bottom and normally it'll have like, you know, it'll spin a bit and then it'll give you like, I don't know, like, you know, chicken run or something. No, yeah. not even a spin. There is nothing. <laughs> well, they've ran out of ideas, I guess. They've just run out of films, I guess. What's no on the Coming on... Soon panel? Fuck all. Nope. Bimbi Zara. What a cool Bimbi name. Zara. Cool name. Bimbi Zara? Yeah. What is that? I don't know. Some, it looks like a Bollywood movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. What's coming out? You got... What was that one with Florence Pugh? Don't Worry Darling. That Olivia oh, Wilde yeah. is coming soon. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That'll be something, I hope. We're saying that. I don't see, like, anything here. No. I saw like, that a, makes sense. a trailer that was muted the other day on Facebook. For this movie, Medieval, coming out. I was like, uh-huh. it's a medieval movie, so I instantly added it to my watch list, but I have no <laughs> idea what it's about. It's got, like, Ben Foster in it, Sophie Lowe. Who's directing it? Peter Jackal. What has he done? I don't know. Oh. Like, not a lot. A ghoul. I don't know what ghoul? that is. Ghoul? <laughs> 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 like I don't mean? know what these things are. Yeah, that Florence Pugh movie's not out to the 23rd of September. I've literally scrolled all the way down yeah. just to find You've it. You've got um, Orphan, First Kill. Yep, I That'd saw that great. as well. <laughs> oh yeah, don't forget Black yeah. Adam. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Black Adam, yeah, that's a while away though, isn't yeah, it? Yes, my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flowers that one. of the Killer Moon. I feel uh, like Martin Scorsese has a movie coming out this year, but I don't yeah, know Killers when. of the Flower Moon has now been postponed to next year. All right, so we're not getting that. No, it keeps being oh, postponed. Okay. It was meant to come out like twenty twenty, and now it's coming out next year. I just keep hearing about all these movies that are definitely coming out, but like they're all like in America, and yeah. everyone in America is watching them. <laughs> yeah, but and everyone's already <laughs> seen it or something. Everyone's already seen yeah. Marcel the Shell. Yeah, with that's shoes the one on. I'm waiting for. Yeah. Marcel's I want to see seen. the shoes. Everybody's already thing. seen. Nope. Um, but we haven't. Yeah. Yeah, they've got um, that Crimes of the Future, the new 
um, yeah. David Cronenberg movie. We get that um, September 9th. I have really, no idea it's been what out that in is. America for a while. That sounds like a movie you just made up on the spot. Babylon? Is that the new Damien Chazelle one? I think it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's coming out this year, apparently. Nice. I've heard no talk about it whatsoever. I don't even know what you're talking about. No, yeah, exactly. See? The uh, musical version of Matilda. I saw that. I'm ignoring that because that new looks Avatar. god awful. Oh, god, yeah. You're... Yeah. And then, I keep forgetting yeah. about that. Not, not a fan. Although Ugh. I've just scrolled past an article that um, said, on first reactions, House of the Dragon is better than Game of Thrones. Well, well, that's, that's not going to be that's, the that's, case. I mean, that's pretty high price, so I don't think it will be true. How can they say that? <laughs> how can they? How can they say that? I don't. Know, hold on, I'm, I'm going to read through the article. You know how oh, much of Game of Thrones there is? Yeah, like was, how many episodes? What do you did mean you get on a watch? first glance? Yeah. <laughs> what does yeah, that like, mean? There's like um, an article about people who have like watched it but i assume there's only one episode that they can watch right if they're yeah. getting the sneak peek so all they have to do with that show that? is like have a plan and then it'll be better than game of thrones yeah because you <laughs> you don't have to compete with what was it they were supposed to do star wars and they got taken off of it for being shit yeah, finishing this like, those guys aren't involved in house of the dragon are they no those, those guys whose names i forgot shows how great Sorry, they i are. don't know either i don't know Benny often wise. Oh, that. Review: yeah. Fire will rain. Wow, violent, shocking, epic. Better than Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad. <laughs> what does that mean? Better than Game of Thrones? I don't what, know. What are, they, what are they talking about? Whoever this person is is just throwing words together like "wow," "epic," "crazy," "banter," "bro." <laughs> it's making me cringe. This is truly one of the ones of the year. Yeah, when is it even meant to fucking come out? <laughs> That's the question. We've also got that like Lord the... of the Rings show for Prime coming out at some point. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Which also looks really shit. Yeah. yeah, I won't be watching that. If you couldn't stick me in front of those for long enough for the movies, I won't be watching this either. Yeah, I just got the 4K uh, Blu-ray for Lord of the Rings Extended Edition. So Nice. Drink from mine. We <laughs> watch a 12-hour marathon of that. <laughs> No. That's one I kind I'm of am dreading, though. That oh, is yeah. one I'm dreading. Yeah, no, th- this is the uh, this is where I open up my spot on the uh, the podcast to anyone listening ever if they want to do that episode because it won't be me. Yeah, we'll have a guest guest on instead of Darcy. Yeah, not me and my ADHD brain. It ain't fucking happening. Yeah, I got the extended versions on Blu-ray like a couple years ago. Because I'd watched the first one. I hadn't watched them in like a decade. And I was like, oh my god, this film's great. And I still haven't rewatched the third one yet. Yeah, the first no, one's just so long. I'm like, yeah, I'll yeah. get around to that. No, yeah. I, I've only ever watched the extended editions. Because my dad had, um, the, you know, the box sets with the yeah, different colored ones. Yeah, my brother them. So Some they're the, the only uh, ones I've seen. Yeah, I think... Actually, no, I've seen both of them. Yeah. Someday when I've got mm. 12 hours to kill, I'll watch them. But... <sighs> I don't know, I'm just too busy to have 12 hours to spare. Well, yeah, what are you talking like, about? Come yeah, we're, on. we're all at that point in our lives now where I feel like that is quite the yeah, task. You really got to <laughs> pick and choose what... I'm not really watching many movies anymore. No, I I, no. I didn't really... To, <laughs> to be fair, but now it's worse. I only, like, the only time I'm watching movies is like for the podcast, so I'm thankful yeah. for that. But. Yeah, I've been forcing myself to recently for some videos I've been working on. That's mm-hmm. been about it outside oh, yeah. of it. Where Chris is watching the Antichrist. Yeah, oh, yeah. we rewatched Antichrist a couple of days ago. A movie that was specifically not for you and you watched it anyway. The Antichrist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually the Antichrist uh, yeah. female symbol, I believe. How was that? Yeah, it's still the same movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's, my opinion didn't massively change, except I actually kind of understood what was going on, which I didn't the first time. Mm-hmm. Just, I kind of got a lot out of it the first time I watched it. Yeah, I'm not rushing being back fucked. to see. Yeah, yeah no, I'm not either. Penis crush, you know, I don't it's think. just a good movie. It's it is far from my favorite um, Von Trier movie, but it's fine. Oh, yeah. I feel like is it my favorite Von Trier? No. What has he done? I don't even know what he's Belter done. Belter in the dark. Uh, I like it more than that. That movie I don't want to watch ever again. Yeah, isn't that movie just like the most depressing? It's really depressing. Thing I kind of found that movie quite boring. It's I really like the soundtrack, so that's that's what's good about that. I always <laughs> listen to the soundtrack. I'm like, I don't yeah, need I don't, to watch yeah. the movie. I just that's listen to <laughs> just to put it York. up on something else. <laughs> yeah. 
A movie yeah. I watched again recently was The Northman. I got that on 4K. Oh. Fucking sweet. Yeah, Fucking the, so good. The so Northman much is great. better the second time. Even though I loved it the first time. I think we all did, but like, oh my god. Yeah, that film's great. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> it holds up, you know. I was no. kind of en- uh, enjoying like, oh look, a new Robert Eggers one. That'll be great. So I just watched it and it was great. It is, it is really good. I like the one that good. we watched. The Witch. Yeah, that film's sick. That is sick. Yeah, it was great. I, I think I actually preferred that one. Yeah, but yeah, The Witch is my favourite of his movies. I don't know why, though. I feel like it was kind of like short, sweet, to the point. I liked it a lot. Yeah, yeah. I just ordered... There was nothing um, not to like, I think. I was uh, always like invested in it as well. Like I wasn't bored of it at any point. Not that I was bored of The Northman, but The Northman is pretty long. Yeah, I just ordered <laughs> The Northman, so I'm looking forward to rewatching it. Yeah, that sounds yeah. great. I mean, The Witch, yeah, it is short, sweet. It has a goat, which not... I fucking many. hate goats, so I was very happy to not... Well, actually, no. Was I happy to see the goat? Not really, but... I like the goat. I'm happy about the demonization of goats. Black, feel it, black, feel it. That's my favourite song. <laughs> so creepy. That song was, like, genuinely creepy as fuck. You guys heard about this, this guy called Michael Mann, who's like, Heat 2 is coming. Mm-hmm. You guys, you guys watched Heat? Yeah, incredible movie. It's I, great. Have, I have no good. idea what you're talking about. <laughs> it's a never... movie made in the 90s by a man called Michael Mann called Heat. It's like a detective movie and Robert De Niro is in it and I'll also Al Pacino. Quick. It's one of the best movies ever in the world, ever. Uh, yeah, <laughs> honestly, I've only seen it once. I watched it for the first time, but I think when I had COVID, so like a few months ago. Um, but m- my God. It's so good. Yeah, I was the same. I watched it for the first time last year, and I was like, this is insane. This is so good. And now Michael Mann's like, Heat 2 is coming. Yeah, he's just... um, Should it, though? He just released a graphic novel um, of a script for Heat 2, and then as soon as that came out, it was like, yeah, it's going to be a movie as well. What's he doing? (laughs) He he was too busy doing Ford versus Ferrari. No, he wasn't, no, he because he that produced one. that. <laughs> he was too busy producing Ford versus Ferrari. What was the actual name of this? I swear it had a different name. Oh, what, Le Man 66 or something. That's yeah. what it was called here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I didn't see that. I heard it was good, though. Yeah. It's just one of those movies that I avoided because it was too long. I don't know why, when you go on these, like, things, producers, producer is before director. I really don't like that. Ugh. Like when you go onto someone's profile, that, 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 oh, I'd hate that. Give me director first, or yeah, else I'm going like... to keep telling you people have directed the wrong movies. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if he was going to do Heat Two, he should have done it like thirty years ago. He looks, he looks like he's yeah. at that point where he would just phone in Heat Two. You know what I mean? I've not even seen this film, but it's rated so four point two, so I feel like, like we people didn't do need love it, it to begin with. But if you're going to do it, at least do it a couple years after the original. Yeah, do it 30 years ago before Fucking the original. Hell. Yeah, this yeah. film's 27 years old. Yeah. Jesus Christ. What are those? Yeah, maybe if you did it like a couple of years after, it would, it would have made a bit more sense. Yeah, maybe. But it's also a movie that doesn't just, it just doesn't need a sequel. No. They wrap everything up in that yeah. story. Oh, yeah, I can literally see like Heat 2 put down on a letterbox that just says Heat 2, directed by Michael Mann, and it just says, Cast and crew, Michael Mann director, Michael yeah. Mann writer. Does it all. But will it have Pacino about arses? What the fuck is Al Pacino it? doesn't even know where he is most times, let alone <laughs> to the point where he's able to act in that movie. Best movie of all time, movie, yes. I love Heat 2, yes, yes. <laughs> what the fuck? When I saw um, The Irish Man in the cinema, I was part of like BFI <laughs> Film Festival, and they had like a live red carpet of the premiere just before and Al Pacino literally looked like he just like shot to earth from a different planet he was like just fucked yeah he's insane doing like uh, Adam Sandler movies oh he's he's probably not he's definitely not there is he yeah yeah, I don't care about this movie and I don't want to see it I only brought it up because it pissed me off (laughs) (laughs) yeah it doesn't need to exist I don't, yeah, I don't know why you'd wait so long to make it. But Heat is great. I might rewatch it because obviously they're talking about it on the next episode of Sardana Cast. Oh, are yeah. they now? It's getting a 4K release next week, so I'm going to get that. Nice. Immediately. 
Well, I say immediately, but we'll, me and Darcy will be in Cornwall. Yeah, so uh, immediately means immediately if there's a HMV in Cornwall. Immediately after I get back from Cornwall. <laughs> no. Well, if nah, we not in Cornwall. If we HMV in Cornwall, I just, I'm you're not at the going peak in. Of, <laughs> you're at the peak of life then, Max. That's the... <laughs> No, nah, because we'll probably leave it in the year or something. Eat <laughs> half a cue while looking at your 4K Blu-ray of me. Yeah. Mm. No point, no point. I was, I was saying, like... Seagulls, calm it down. Jesus. Um, yeah. That's, like, crystal clear on the podcast as well. <laughs> like, we've got birds in the room. Yeah, I was saying, if we watch any TV in Cornwall, I'm going to be severely disappointed. I don't think any of us want to watch TV. Like, we were There's all no, talking about, like, why... We don't why... have TV where we're going, but, like, if we yeah. even, like, see one, I'm just not going to be happy. What, like, even in, like, a pub? Yeah, even then. <laughs> don't want to see it. Because <laughs> you know what's going to be on there? Like, in the news or football. Mm. Lame, boring, nobody likes the news, nobody likes football. Grow up. New Wes Anderson movie. We're all going to see that, but he's, he's back at it with his new movie, that I told Darcy to do a lot of research on. I hope you've done it. There's, there's like fuck all about it though. Awesome. Like I have, li- I, I went through like six or seven different websites, and it's literally the same stuff. It's like this is a film about a convention in America with uh, a couple of people that meet each other, and yeah. I was like, cool. And then That's like, fine. oh. Bill Murray can't do it anymore because he got COVID, so Steve Carell was going to be in it. And I was like, cool. It was supposed to be shot in Rome, but now it's in Madrid. Cool. Like, that's, that's a strange, it. That, that is like, all of it. Swap over. Like, it should have been Bill Murray, but now it's Steve Carell. Like, they replaced <laughs> him with Steve. Like, he, yeah. now it's this guy who's kind of the same, but different. Mm. <laughs> I, t- I don't know what that's all about, to be honest. It's something to do with... I don't know, Steve Crow wanted to do a movie and was like, well, Bill Murray can't do it. Do Who you doesn't want to do work it? with Wes Anderson yeah. now? Everyone, like everyone is in this movie. Yeah, I'm not sure apart how... Apart from Bill Murray. <laughs> you seen I the uh, cast list? Yeah, Holy it's, shit. It's so long. Like, I don't, How does Wes Anderson afford some of these people? Because some it's of these people of are like... Yeah, I feel like yeah, a lot yeah. of people just want to work with him. Yeah, they'll oh, maybe, work yeah. for like a tiny paycheck yeah. just to work with him. He's so really cool. Here's who he's got. Jason Schwartzman, Adrian Brody, Willem Dafoe, Jeffrey Wright, Tilda Swinton, Jeff Goldblum, Edward Norton, Liev Schreiber. These are all quite... They're regulars. They're regulars Normally, in yeah. Wes Anderson movies. Uh, who else? Uh, Margot Stephen, Robbie's in there Stephen as well. Stephen Park, Tony Revolori and Rupert Friend. Uh, Margot Robbie, yeah. Tom Hanks is in this mm-hmm. one. I don't think he's been in a... He's not, no. Before. Uh, Rita Wilson, mm-hmm. Maya Hawke. Steve mm-hmm. Carell, Matt Dillon, Matt Dillon, uh, Hong <laughs> Matt Chow, Dillon. Uh, also Scarlett Johansson and Brian Cranston. Yes, yeah. Brian Cranston indeed. My boy. And out of the cast list, only two of them have names at the moment, which I don't understand Bill at all. <laughs> <laughs> like you look through the cast listing, and apparently some like post production now as well, but only two of them seem to have names. I don't understand what is going on with this movie. Or, like, <laughs> what is going to yeah. happen? I'm looking forward to seeing Brian Cranston in a Wes Anderson movie where you actually see him instead of hear his voice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good old Isle of Season Dogs. Isle of Dogs, I yeah. I forgot about that. I'm just hoping they frame it correctly at the cinema this time. Should we just go to a different cinema? In we, hopes yeah, that, we like. Should, shouldn't we? <laughs> in in hopes that it'll be better. That's all we have. Yeah. Oh, it's should... got, I'm reading this Vogue <laughs> article and it's got, like, another piece of information on Wes. It's like, oh, what have you found? It, uh, studio has yet to announce a release date for the new project, though late 2022 or early 2023 Boo. seems possible. More good news, Anderson aficionados won't have to wait long to see even more from the director. He also has Netflix's The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar in the yes, pipeline. Um, as a Roald Dahl adaptation. It is. Starring Benedict Cumberbatch, Ray Fiennes, Dev Patel, Baden Kingsley... And Richard Iwadi. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's going to be great. That's going to be awesome. I've I've read the book of that, and the book is really, really bizarre. Mm -hmm. I think I have, but I don't really remember. Well, the thing is, well, so I got it because I used to be a big fan of Roald Dahl, so I used to like read all his books. And then I read all of his children's books. And supposedly, yeah, this is an adult book. And I read it when I was like 11. And my mum was like, what is this book? And I was like, oh, I thought it was a kid's book. And it was just like a really long, boring book. But... (laughs) 
I assume I assume that's going to be better because I am now a grown human being and a, <laughs> not 11 years old going, where's Charlie and why isn't he at the factory anymore? Maybe we... Yeah. Is that the best one? The Roald Dahl one? Is that the best Roald Dahl adaptation? What? That early one, the uh, oh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate um... Factory. With Gene Wilder. Yeah. That um, or Fantastic Mr. Fox. They're the two oh, okay. best ones. I'd probably say Fantastic Mr. Fox is, yeah, but I'm yeah, really yeah. biased because yeah. I like that. I love um, both I love, Yeah, I love the story as well. Like, Charlie and Chocolate Factory is like, it's all right, but... I mean, as a story, mm-hmm. not 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 like the film, but, yeah, I just kind of preferred it. I really like that movie. I Matilda's like Matilda's probably I my actual favourite, but I've... Not, oh, I don't know. Mati- uh, Matilda's all right. Yeah, Matil- I, think, I think I like Matilda mm-hmm. the best, actually, because, you know... And it's got a lot of nostalgia so to me, and Danny DeVito is like the coolest guy in the world. Yeah, very strange seeing him in that. Yeah, and then someone else is going to be like, like juxtaposing like, him. Yeah, in, like, <laughs> <laughs> what he does now. <laughs> Someone's going to be like, no, the BFG is the best, and I'll be like, you can fuck it off. That's like one of the worst things. That Spielberg movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm, she missed a cartoon one. All right. The cartoon. No, no. What the live action movie? Or the book yeah. They did. The live action one. Yeah, yeah that's Steven Spielberg Spielberg movie. Oh god, yeah, that sucked. Jesus. I watched it, um it was you know, like uh they put like these kind of films on at Christmas and I was watching it, and I was like, Oh my yeah. god. Like what is wrong with just the Why original? You just put on heat at Christmas for crying yeah. out loud. <laughs> Remember one <laughs> Christmas day I was having the good dinosaur on. That was how I watched it the first time. Oh man. I was listening to that episode the other day because I listened back to these oh, what, cause, episodes. Because we hate The Good Dinosaur yeah. so much. That film was just so... Bl- I, f- I don't even remember what happened. All I remember Nothing at the happened. end is that he gets to put his like little paw print on the totem or whatever. Yeah. Don't remember any of it. That's what happens. Dad gets washed away. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was is that funny. something we should be laughing about? Oh, uh, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's so dumb. Cool. Uh, I forget what we were talking about. New West Anderson, that's going to be awesome. Two of them. Aren't we lucky? Yeah, man. I watched a movie called The Seed Beef. <sighs> it's on Netflix, for those of you who didn't know. It's like one of the top ones in the UK. Yeah, right it's number six it's number on six. Netflix radar. It's an animated movie. Uh, I guess I should get the director up. Yeah, I don't like, actually know who did it. Chris Morrison? It looks a lot like a no, DreamWorks movie. It was Chris Williams. Yeah. It's going for like a DreamWorksy type of thing. Yeah. Uh, and it's about like pirates and they've got to hunt the sea beast and um, there's um, like a kid who wants to be a pirate. It's about like, oh, it's like how to train, it turns into how to train your dragon after about the first act, I think. Um, It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it was you get just like progressively more disappointed in a movie as it goes along yeah like the first it, act was like really mm. great for me i was like oh this is great this is awesome because i'm just like such a slut for fucking like the sea and like, a movie about like, what, pirates I, on the you, sea and it was, looks so nice you know that is exa- do you know what that's exactly because i only watched 36 I, I counted it, yeah. 36 minutes of this movie. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the first thing I thought was, oh, of course the first fucking shot is like, the sea. Max is going to love the sea movie. And yeah, then, it was awesome. <laughs> like, yeah. It was like a ship. <laughs> a ship was like on fire. And there was like a kid just floating on the sea on like a like a wreckage. And then yeah, it was, was like cool. glowing underwater. I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> I think that's that's literally where I lost interest completely. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then, yeah, the movie actually started. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, and then, like, I tried to, like, keep watching it. And then it just got to the point where I just went, I'm not even, like, watching this. I don't even care. Yeah. So I just turned it <laughs> off. <laughs> but I like all the all the stuff where they were, like, fighting the sea monsters. Or, like, this is cool. And I do battle with that huge sea monster, like, that's, like... Yeah attacking like a nearby ship and they're like oh, I guess we're going to go save them and then they draw the sea monster away and then they, it's like tearing their ship apart that yeah. was cool <laughs> that was cool but then I was like well, how are they going to fuck this up they're probably going to be like the sea monster I, I was like always in the back of my mind I was like I hope they don't spin this to be like the sea monsters aren't bad the people are bad <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't pull a how to drain your dragon on us which is which works in that movie but I don't think it would work in this and, and what do his- they do <laughs> They do exactly that, and it becomes how to train your dragon, the sea. How to train your sea dragon. How to train the sea, and it's 
it becomes a bit less interesting. I won't say it's like awful, like it loses so much steam, but it's like, oh, eh. yeah, I assume, yeah, I assume people do like it because it, yeah, it's quite popular. But, I really um... like the animations. So that's why I was there. Oh but yeah, the I animation's cool. Something else. I want it. Something else. Just do a different story. All these great animators who probably got paid shit, and they're like, yeah, just <laughs> animating this like, like smooth CBs. Look at the CBs, isn't that? I really wanted something more from like the actual, the main CBs. It was just like a red salamander type thing. It was like all smooth. Yeah, it seemed to be like the one quality that they bring up in the in that little beast little one was that it was like oh. The red one. It's like, okay. Well, they got a red tube stuck, like <laughs> horn, a horn on it. Like, there's your CV. Like, they've just done something so much more interesting, but I think they're probably restricted by, like, it's a kid's movie and it's a movie for kids. If we made it too interesting, it would blow their minds. But I don't know. You could do something different with it. Yeah. I'm so bored of these, these movies that, like, go nowhere. It's so much, it had so much promise. I don't know. I just wanted like more swashbuckling pirate stuff and like <laughs> crazy fights and action scenes and all that, but it doesn't really do that, you know. It just becomes mm. something that you're really very accustomed to, and uh, I don't know if people see through it, but I definitely did. I guess it's just because I watch like a lot of movies. I suppose it's like this is just the same thing <laughs> over and over again. I've just been like, why aren't I just watching that movie instead? <laughs> yeah. Some people probably just don't care. Or yeah, maybe probably. it's because you know you Kids might. In front of it, no, I can't. Yeah, win. or maybe Kids they'll be like, that, "Yeah, they like that sea stuff. Let's do that instead." Look, it's a cool little jelly guy who's awesome. He's like a little blue dibby jelly fish yeah, or whatever. He, I don't, it, That's cool, isn't it, kids? Isn't the kids are gonna clap? You know. It's also the fun. It's like watch movies, but it's like the thumbnail as well. So you know that that dibby is just a. Uh, Whoa, mom! Look at that thing! I want to watch that one. Yeah, it was cute. I'm not gonna lie, it was cute. But yeah, I didn't stick around long enough. To no, me actually, to see it, it, if you had stuck around for long enough, it might have annoyed you as much as it annoyed me. I was like, oh, and there's that one. <laughs> They've got to have one of those little dibby creatures in there somewhere. Yeah. They're going to make toys out of it. I don't think they're going to make toys out of it. Probably it's not, like, but I'm going to have a look if anyway. If we did, this would be what it was, you know. Like, oh, what is this going to do? And then, like, I know you didn't watch this part. Mm. It's like the, the girl gets locked in um, a room on the ship. And then, then they're like, how is she going to get out of this one? And then the little dibby creature comes back and bites the window off from the outside. It's like, how did it know how to do that? Or like, I didn't know it was going <laughs> to... It had not displayed that before, but now it can do that. And it just bites the window off. And then she's free. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> the Sea Beast plush toy. <laughs> oh, see, I told you. I fucking told you. What's it called? It doesn't have a name. It doesn't need a name. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't need called, one. It's just called... It's called Jacob? Jacob, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I don't know if that's true. No, I, okay, I, I think I just went on. You know on those websites where it's just like they name everything under the sun in the tags? Yeah. I think that's what it was. Yeah, it just says, The Sea Beast plush toy, cartoon movie, anime, stuffed doll, Jacob and the Sea Beast plush doll for kids. Boys, Xmas, gift. You think they've got the, the titular Sea Beast as a plushie as well? That's one you don't have to put any effort into whatsoever. No, all of them are the... Oh, no, no. That's not no, the same that's one. No, that's a Charmander. Oh, wow. Sorry, what the hell is... Like, what is... <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. They got I all like those this guys. One. It's Carlos the... Yeah, that's, was... there it is. It's there. Oh, yeah, it's that they, one, They yeah. were all in... So, yeah. I mean, I know what? nobody can see this, but this they've got... This is Carlos. Who is he? Those little, like, yellow ones with the little legs that, like, they disturb... When they get to the beach, it looks like a mustache. And they all yeah, come after them. Got, and then they've yeah. also got the the red sea beast. I'm like, yeah, yeah, brilliant. Oh, great. <laughs> they look like a jelly sweet. They like do, a... don't they? Like, oh, you, they you legit just, look like, terrifying. Didn't try at all. I, I wouldn't want this anywhere near me. I'll be honest. Also, I feel like I gripe with this like a lot, but like you don't need to hire these big name actors. 
You could like, who cares it? that Carl Urban is in it? Who cares? Like Dune Makachan, like nobody gives a fuck. Just hire voice actors. They all sound like themselves. Kids They're definitely just live don't action. care for sure. They just live act but don't I feel like you'd have to pay them more. Yeah. I feel of like course. you have to pay Carl Urban a lot more than you have to pay a, just a voice actor who does different voices. Yeah, like you can make that guy sound sounds like, like Carl, Carl Urban, Urban. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you, you really wanted to. Pay him a to. fraction of the price, yeah. like and have him sound almost exactly the same. He just sounded like he does in the boys. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> I expected him to like toss in the word "cun" at some point. It gets me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why not yeah. test the waters? See if anyone's paying attention. I guess. So yeah, that was a shame. That was kind of a letdown. I did like it overall. I thought it was. It held my attention just enough. Like the animation is good. It's just I feel like they really could have done more with it, and that's a bit of a disappointment. But I don't know if I look to Netflix for like interesting animation really nowadays. I think they're kind of phasing that out. Yeah, because they, like they, they can't afford it. That's why. <laughs> yeah, there was a point where they were like one of the places where animation was doing really well. Yeah, it's you a get, shame, like, really isn't interesting it? creative stuff. Like I lost my body or Klaus or. Mm-hmm. That yeah, Green Eggs and Ham things. show, which is great. Or Bojack. The Cuphead the, show. The classic one. Bojack. Or even Big Mouth, Big as Mouth. shit as that Big was, Mouth. it was successful. I don't care about that. A lot of shit is successful. Um, I guess I should give it a rating. 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10 for the Sea Beast. Watch it if you want. Uh, whatever. It's two hours long. Yeah, I recommend oh, not. Yeah, <laughs> I what? recommend it's not. It's going to be an hour and a half. I'm like... Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it's really long for like That's longer no than reason. How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does what that movie does, like a, just way less valuable. Yeah, but. just just watch How to Train Your Dragon, guys. Just watch that trilogy instead. Yeah, mm. get a better, They're great. better time from it. Yeah, cool. I will get on to the meat and the whatever else we've got meat going and on. Potatoes of the pod. Yeah, let's do it, boys. We did a free for all. It's the first Sunday. Of the month, where we do free for all. So we all just picked a movie. We like, oh, okay, we'll just pick high and low. Uh, the one that I picked. Uh, forget what falling down. It was falling down. Um, <laughs> and Darcy's one. Uh, at Eternity's Gate. Yeah, got it all, and I had no help. So Chris <laughs> picked the first one. What was it? Tell us now. Yeah, so I picked Akira Kurosawa's <laughs> 1963 movie, High and Low. And we talked about Seven Samurai um, at some point last year, so I thought it was about yeah. time we talked about one of his other movies, something maybe not samurai related. Um, this movie is um, it's kind of like this crime drama mystery sort of thing. There's a character whose son is kidnapped, and it turns out it isn't his son. It's actually his chauffeur's son who's kidnapped, and he becomes a victim of extortion when the person who kidnaps him holds, holds him for a ransom. It's all about them trying to get his son back, then this police investigation trying to find out who this guy is and stop him. And yeah. What and do we all think? Yeah. yeah. To be fair, that's how I'm going to end my synopsis. Just go, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What, like, what do you mean? Oh, when I get to my movie, I oh, was okay. going to end it the same way as Chris. And yeah. We'll all do that. Um, <laughs> it's easy to do, to be honest. Um, was it really last year we talked about Seven Samurai? I feel like it was. Yeah, I feel like it was twenty twenty, and it. No, no, it was last year. It was one of the last um, lockdown. Oh, it was it well. Yeah, I think we it got was our like... lockdown last year. Yeah. Yeah, I swear it was <laughs> no. like. It was just before I moved to Portsmouth, so it was like. Yeah, yeah it was only a few something. weeks before you joined the podcast permanently. That is a horrendous thought. Yeah, I don't remember it being... I thought it was way further than that. Oh, you do? I feel like it was, like, years ago. Yeah, uh, I know. Like, I remember cleaning out rabbit shit listening to that podcast. Yeah. And I don't remember the last time I cleaned out rabbit shit, so <laughs> that's terrifying. But, yeah, good movie, I think. Um, I was expecting, like, a samurai, though. Like, what? This is, like... They're wearing ties. Why? Oh, because well, it's Akira Kurosawa. And all I've seen from him is like Ran, which is like a sam- samurai war and all that. Um, I don't know if it's the samurai war, but it's like one of the old Japanese medieval wars type movies. 
and uh, Seven Samurai. Oh, know? fair enough. Both as, having as samurai. You can probably kind of tell, they are samurais in that movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this one, I was like, this guy's wearing a tie. Uh, this is weird. Mm. It starts out with a scene, and they're just like talking about shoes, and I was like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, it's the Japanese succession, but then it gets yeah. crazy. Something really interesting about Akira Kurosawa, I think, is he's best known for those samurai movies, and he did a lot of them, but he was like an incredibly versatile director. He has loads and loads of different types of movies. He's got a film called Akira, which is really great as well. Mm-hmm. That's kind of just like a cool. straight drama, really yeah. sad movie. I, was, I, I, I watched this, um... Ah, oh, what was it on? It was on Prime, but Chris got a thing for it. Yeah. Oh, VFI player. Yeah. VFI player, yeah. Watch that. Which I keep calling movie It also came accident. up with, like, you could also watch Ikiru, or you could also watch Throne of Blood, and I was like, oh, man, I've got to watch all these movies, but uh, I just don't have the time. Throne of Blood sounds sick. Yeah, it's like a Macbeth <laughs> adaptation. Oh, that makes yeah. me want to watch it less. <laughs> you should just not have told me. No, it's Akira Kurosawa, though, so it's going to be awesome. It just is. Because all of his movies are awesome. I've never seen a movie of his that I didn't like. Even, like, Ran, which maybe I was not in the best headspace when I watched that. Because it was really late, I remember. And it's like a three-hour movie. Oh, I don't know. God. But I got the 4K recently. I'm really excited to check that out. Um, this one is, like, incredible. It's insane. Um, I, I love a good detective movie. Yeah, same. It's, like, one of the, one of the OG detective movies. It reminded me of, like, Prisoners. In that way. Or, like, Heat. As we were talking about, you know, <laughs> the really good ones, like Seven. I think like, they, pro- they probably all got them, like, this is like where it started, or like, I don't know, it's like, it, maybe not where it started, but like. I don't, well, I mean, it wasn't this the 60s, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a really the, influential movie. Yeah, well, there we go. Um, I just loved it, you know. And all like the commentary on like, the high and low, it's called high and low, and the, these rich people high up on a hill, and it's contrasted with like the low. The, the people who are down below, literally down below, but also like because they're like, relatively poor in comparison to these people who live high up on the hill, and they all look at this family who's like a this really rich family who has everything, and they're high up on the hill where they like suffer in the heat. And it's like a really sweaty movie as well, very like, claustrophobic. It felt muggy, but then we are also in a muggy climate, so it just felt the same, really, didn't it? It was like. Mm. I could be looking outside yeah, my own like window the right now. It's time to watch it. Me. <laughs> it kind of was, to be honest. That was kind of gross, though. I'm not a big fan of uh, watching other people sweat, especially yeah. if I'm sweating. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, or not. Like, <laughs> yeah. maybe I want to be watching, like, like Arctic or something. <laughs> 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 then I'll watch this, like, when it gets cold. Mm. <laughs> they, these people look hot. <laughs> By that comparison, it, like, it warms you up because they look hot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a lot of this movie is literally just these like detectives going through like all the evidence that they have. Cause, like the I think the first act of the movie is like all this shit going down, the kid being kidnapped, being returned, um, and then like the second act is just them going back through the first act of the movie and going like, here's this evidence we picked up here, here's this mm-hmm. recording we got, and I found that stuff so fascinating. Like, I really mm-hmm. loved that whole procedural sort of detective styles one of the reasons i loved zodiac so much so i really loved seeing it explored here and it was like never boring for me even though it is it's really i'd say it's quite a slow movie at some point Mm -hmm. but it never outstays its welcome and never like feels like it's going too slow it kind of just feels like the perfect pace for this sort of thing yeah i was worried with how they were going to pad it out because it is like two and 20 minutes yeah it's it's quite long length um but they do split it up very, very well, I thought. Um, I was kind of thinking that it was going to be a bottle movie. When it's like, we got like half an hour in, they're just like in this one room. I thought they were just going to stay in this one uh, room for the whole Yeah, I, I thought that as well, movie. to be fair. Um, but I'm glad that they went outside. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they ventured they, away. They decided to do that because um, I don't know how it would have held up. I mean, it would have been a completely different movie. But I do appreciate this like splitting up it's like two halves of the same movie like this one is they're getting the sun back and then they get the sun back and i'm like you got like an hour left and then i, I was like what what are they going to do now yeah <laughs> like now we're gonna find the bastard and i was like oh yes <laughs> this is great um because you feel quite bad for this guy who was his name gondo 
who has like staked his entire fortune, it's like 50 million yen, um, to try and bolster his place in his shoe factory uh, mm-hmm. or his shoe company. And he's got to like give it all the way to save his chauffeur's son. Um, it was kind of like a lose lose situation for him in a way. Because, like, you know, you, you don't save his son and then put your money into your company, but everybody's going to think you're a dick. Yeah. And then nobody's going to buy your shoes and then you're going to go bankrupt. But if you save his son, you're out 50 million yen. Like, what's the right yeah. decision? And it was like a really interesting and very well paced uh, structure to like how he finally makes his decision to actually give the kidnapper the money in the end. I liked all of that. Yeah, that's that like great scene where he's like really torn trying to decide, and his wife's like, You can just build everything back up. It doesn't matter if you lose it all. We can just start again. Yeah, but I, I appreciated that he was like, Nah, fuck you, because you don't yeah. understand. And I was like, I was kind of on his side. I was like, yeah, like, Jesus, it's a lot of money to lose. And he was saying to his wife, like, you, all, you've grown up, like, with your, like, riches, and, like, you've never been in poverty. You've never, you don't know what poverty is like, but I know what poverty is like. Mm. And I don't think you would be able to cope with it. I was like, yeah, it's, it's all well and good saying, like, do the right thing when you're outside of what that might feel like. What did you think of it, Darcy? You've not said anything yet. What did you get from it? <laughs> just shrugging my shoulders. I don't, I don't really know, to be honest. I, just, I think I haven't seen a film in a while that's just made me think, I, I don't know, like, just... Did what? you like it? Not really. No. Um, yeah, you didn't seem invested at all. I was no, like watching just... it and you were just kind of like zoning out. I, just... I get it, though. It's like a 1963 movie. It's two and a half hours long. <laughs> it's in Japanese, for crying out loud. This is not uh, the most accessible movie in the world. Yeah, no, that's why I, mean... I suggested Darcy watch it like when she had like a day off rather than a, like after she got back from travelling all day. Is that what uh, you did? Well, yeah, because what, um, what kind of happened was I came home to watch it because um, I had the house to myself because my uh, family went away and whatever. And I literally could not fucking access this movie and it was pissing me off so much because I couldn't get a hold of Chris and then when I could get a hold of Chris my TV broke and then like oh I just it was fucking nightmare so I watched it when I came back and do you know what I don't think it would have made a difference to be honest I I I like I kind of appreciate like you know like you know like detective movies like the whole like noir thing you know like you know I, I, Zodiac was great but I just wasn't feeling this there was just a lot of nothing happening, but everything happening. And I was like, I should be invested in this because like, you know, some like cool scenes, like, you know, where they're they're on the phone and the detectives are like, wait, two seconds, open the curtains now. And they like jump on the floor. And I'm like, that's fucking sick. That's funny. And then that's about most of what I remember apart from, oh, why have they thrown the money out the train window? How did that even get to that person that's thrown out the train? It doesn't make any sense to me. And then the last scene, like the the final shot of the film, that was it. Everything else I just didn't yeah. didn't remember or care about. And it's nothing, to, I don't think it's anything to do with, maybe this guy has some great films, but I just, yeah, maybe. like, I don't know. Um, I think the only bit, I t- well, apart from, <laughs> the only other note was just like, we looked up what the ransom would be worth now. And it's actually yeah. not as much as you think it would be. Mm-hmm. Because obviously, um, Japanese money is like, yeah. uh, a lot higher sound. Yeah, it's massively inflated. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it wasn't as much as I thought. And yeah, I was I like, was oh, 50 like, million. It was only like 1 million. Yeah, 1.4. Mm-hmm. Um, which is obviously quite a lot of money for like the 60s as well. But, um, oh. yeah, I just, um, yeah, I just didn't, this just wasn't the film that I fucked with and I will never watch it again. And I'm, I wholeheartedly mean that. will yeah, never watch it fair. again. That is fair. I, th- I thought it was quite weird that, like, the police were there, but they were, like, telling Gondo to, like, give the guy his money. Mm. But it's like, you're the police. Don't you have, like, money set aside for these things? I mean, they were like, nobody has ever asked for this much money. And it's mm. like, oh, I get it, but like, also, like, you're not even going to, like, try to help him yeah, like, without, did, did with you, puns. I don't, I know He'll cr- be bankrupt with, without this money, and you're just going to be like, Give him all of that. <laughs> yeah, they're basically like, just doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, like, 
I know Chris likes to read up facts about the movie. Did you read about how? Um, so when, after this movie came out, um, instead, of, so the film was I don't know. Apparently, supposedly, it's supposed to be this like um, plight to try and increase uh, sentencing for people who like kidnap people. But instead, all it did was increase kidnapping crimes, and yeah. the director got blamed for it essentially. Yeah, no, and he... it was like the funniest thing I read. Um, it did um, increase sentencing for kidnappers, and apparently, Kurosawa saw a lot of backlash because of that. Oh yeah, like he hmm. got blamed for everything. Like <laughs> he was blamed for the increase of kidnapping, the increase of sentences. Like, like what was the what was the uh, what was the need? You know, down That's if weird. you do, down if you yeah. don't, man. Yeah, it's strange. That kind of reminds me of um, when an episode of uh, Kieslowski's Decalogue came out. It made people think about the death penalty in uh, Poland, I think, um, and that like really shook up that part of the world. Um, it's interesting how film can do that, or like art can do that to like affect the world in that way. Because it's you think of like the law and it's like very set in its ways, but if you can make a movie and it makes people think differently about certain things, that's you've done your job. I think <laughs> so you've done something amazing there. So I appreciate like. Maybe I don't know if the backlash was warranted because he's just making a movie at the end of the day. Like he didn't want to. Yeah, like he didn't implement he didn't these things. Impl- yeah, he so. didn't. He didn't make the laws. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, like he made that happen in a type of way, like maybe by yeah. proxy. But yeah, it's just interesting to think about. He does kind of explore the death penalty, like in the final scene, mm-hmm. where you see like the guy committed oh, yeah. a crime, has been sentenced to death, and he's like screaming and crying and like really scared to die that he, was so fucked up yeah, yeah, that, that last bit was, that was, last bit was mental and do you was know, like you went um when you look for this film on imdb that you know how you get the banners that that like fucking last scene is like the clip that plays on the banner and i was like why, why would you do that why would you why spoil the movie for yeah. people who haven't seen it to be fair, I don't know if there's like sound on it or anything, but it's just like, yeah, because like, by the time oh you get God, to the end, the sound of it, I was like shaken. I was like, oh my fucking god! And then it just ends. It ends. It's like the end. Gone. That's the end of it. It was oh, like yeah. um, Only Baba. <laughs> oh yeah, where, where it just uh, no, but at least that one just had like, like you um, see the most horrific shit ever, and then it ends. <laughs> it had at least like a little title card at the end, didn't it? It was just like, yeah. was that? Done. Yeah. And then, yeah, that was it. it just it was over. <laughs> Must yeah, be a only thing Barbara, of... you didn't get any of that. It, was just, it just cut. Oh, yeah, yeah, just cut. It, just cut. it must be a thing of, like, I don't know, Japanese movies of that time yeah. or something. They just were like, fuck it. Well, I know a lot of old movies just didn't have end credits because it no. used to be at the beginning instead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were at the beginning of this film, weren't they? Yeah. But the subtitles are so <laughs> shit that, like, they didn't even, like, say who anyone was. It was just like, da da da. And then that was it. And I was like, oh, okay. Honestly, <laughs> that was. The whole time I was like, oh man, I feel so bad for Gondo. This guy, um, he's like, he's lost all his money and like mm. all his, uh, like his colleagues are being so like awful to him. These are awful people. But then at the end, this guy who we thought was the bad guy who kidnapped a child, um, which I'm not saying is like <laughs> the, the, the right decision, yeah. but like, then he like breaks down and you kind of, it kind of, rematerializes everything in your head and you're like oh well fuck like, it's just like the unfair nature of that guy's life that he felt like he had to do that to get some money and like his mother died and it, he was living in squalor and like just kept looking up every day at this wonderful house on the hill and thinking about what it was like to work there or like live there and like the unfair nature of his life I feel like he was doomed either way it was like it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah. And then it brought the shutter down as well. It was like the shutter comes down as he's like screaming. He's like, I'm not afraid of death. And then he like breaks down, starts screaming. And then they just close the shutter and they're like, you don't need to look at that. And I was like, oh, fuck. It's like the separation of their two worlds. It's the high and the low. And that, just, that kind of reminded me of like Parasite in that way. Yeah. When like, specifically in that scene in Parasite where the rich family is coming back from their holiday because it started raining, and then the poor family is, like, funneling like, water out of their home because they're drowning. Yeah. And that's what that reminded me of. Like, oh, Jesus. The, the, I think there's, like, a lot of commentary on, like, the disparity between classes in this movie. 
and the rich and the poor. Yeah, definitely. I think there's a lot of like really great long shots in the movie. Yeah. Just cinematography just generally, I think is really great. I think yeah, it, there's quite a lot of just like long scenes as well. Mm-hmm. It seems like he really like likes to draw things out in this movie, but never in a way where it does feel like it goes on too long. You know, you want to sit in the emotion yeah, of like, exactly. what the characters are feeling. This guy's like out on his ass. He's like, oh my god, I'm gonna lose all this money and <laughs> have to sell my house and live in like squalor and like, how how am I gonna do that? But I guess like he still has the house though. He's not starting from square one. Yeah. Like, he could afford, like, a nice house. Yeah. Still, just, like, not on a hill. And he'll still be able to rebuild his fortune. And that's what he does. Like, at the end, he was like, um, he visits the guy and he's like, yeah, I'm doing fine. And I've got, like, my little company that I'm going to build up and I'm doing all right. And it's like, you were never in danger, really. Not, not mm. in the same way that these people are. In the, in the low. The people who are down there in like the gutters, you know, you are never at their at their lowest. You could only be at like your own perceived height, and that's why like you get this this disparity between like the rich and the poor, and like even just in today uh, today's society, and it's not changed. <laughs> this was a movie that came out in 1960, and this is just a theme in a lot of movies that like you put that in a movie, it's bound to not change over the years because. The system doesn't change, and it, it weighs itself heavily against uh, the lower classes. Yeah, I feel like in that scene where he's like getting all scared about losing everything, he's just not... All he knows is being that high. He doesn't even think about the fact that, you know, he could just start again. For him, like, it's either he's that high or he's, like, just nowhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's... You like when he goes to, like, the meth then. You see yeah. all those addicts there? They look like absolute zombies. Yeah, that was gross. That was weird, man. <laughs> that was weird. Like so many actors and like extras just doing like weird <laughs> meth head acting. It's like, <laughs> meth head acting. Uh, uh, they look insane. It's it was freaky. It was kind of freaky. And, like come up to him like, ah, oh, get away. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> you don't see uh, this kind of thing in like I don't know Hollywood because it's it's very glamorized. We're at a meth there, <laughs> not not really like that, but it does have a different feel to it when it's from the sixties and it's in black and white and all looks like really grainy, like everybody's sweating. It has a different feel to it. Mm, I feel like it captures that, sweating. that environment very well. Yeah, right. I feel like Kurosawa's good at um. Putting like making films where everyone's like clearly very hot and sweaty. That's like <laughs> what just really most hot of Japan. Seven Samurai is. Yeah, he also has a like a lot of the times his big conflicts happen with like torrential rain, which happens mm-hmm. in this as well. Does it? Yeah, it's like a sequence where there's like raining lows. Where was that? I swear that happens. I don't remember any rain happening. No. Was it raining? No. I don't remember. That. I think it was just very hot. Maybe there was, but I don't remember. The point where, like, the detectives go to his house to, like, see him, but then they go back to the car and he's just, like, outside mowing the lawn. He's yeah. Below, <laughs> doesn't know what so else to do funny. with his life. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. bit was kind of funny, to be honest. It was, it was like, uh, do the right thing in its, like, depiction of the torrential heat. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, near the end of the movie, there's heavy downpour. Okay. That to uh, increase the intensity of the situation. That's a trivia note on IMDb. I don't right. remember well, this. No. I agree to disagree, but <laughs> maybe I'll watch it again. I would watch it again. You know, it is the kind of movie I feel like I might get more from, but it's just like a really well made and very good movie overall. And it is the kind of thing that I, I really appreciate and I really like. Um, especially in these like more modern movies like Zodi and Blade Runner 2049 and all that shit. Um, but then, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that was a brilliant movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but all these amazing movies. <laughs> Shit. He was never like another point where like he, he clearly he had never been l- at the point of poverty as he so claimed was when they said that his fortune began with his wife's dowry. Like mm. 
a lot of people they would like marry into rich families and then they got like, a dowry from their uh, their wife's parents would like give them money and that's how they accrued uh, more wealth you just just marry into the right families and that's very medieval i suppose yeah uh, that doesn't happen i don't know if it happens anymore doesn't happen here but i don't know about japan probably not probably not. it just feels like a very medieval sentiment to me yeah, yeah. what do they what do they feel like they keep saying like you haven't got got the guts to let the child die and it's like what is that why is that something that takes guts <laughs> why is that something <laughs> that, oh i guess i'll just let the child die um ha that was a really tough decision for me to make it's like it's not your kid though no and that's what it was that was like it's not your kid like you're well within your rights to just let him die it's true yeah You'd be an absolute arsehole but like no, but at it, the end of the day true. i'd understand <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they mean. He's like, yeah. he's too soft to yeah. do that, as most people are. I don't know. It dep- I think it would very much depend on the situation, right? Yeah. I mean, there he are, was like there all are, up for no it when he thought that he was, would do that. But... When he thought that it was his child, he was like, oh, yeah, of course I'll give you the money. But then when he found out that it wasn't, he was like, I don't know about this, which is fair. Well, <laughs> no, I agree. Like, it, like it, sure, it's probably a little bit selfish but then at the end of the day duh like you know <laughs> you don't give a shit about this kid like let's be honest at least he's honest about it he's like oh well, i don't really know because i don't give a fuck about him and it's like yeah fair enough like <laughs> your chauffeur was always you know? like please just, just do it man please i mean yeah if, i don't know if me and the chauffeur yeah. were like best mates i'll probably be like oh, all right yeah, fair man. enough because i'm it's doing like, it for you not yeah. for him i don't give a shit about this kid but i care about my mate <laughs> it was horrible i was like care about my mate care about my son's best friend and all mm. that and yeah i guess people get kidnapped like so much <laughs> children get kidnapped so frequently it is horrible like especially in like it's like a statistic where like there's so many kids get kidnapped in China like every day. It's horrible to, to, to fucking read about. I'm sadly <laughs> not surprised like, by that. It seems like it'd be quite easy to do. Yeah, I think maybe people want money or like, like oh, there's a kid, like, yeah. whatever. I, I don't know what goes through their minds. Um, <laughs> but it's so like now it was like going through my head the whole time I was watching this. This does happen. <laughs> yeah. It still happens, and it's it's horrible. It's something I wasn't. I'm not too sure. I was a big fan of was the music in this movie. Yeah, uh, he um, Kurosawa had a habit apparently of only giving his composer like a week to make the score. Oh my god! And that was all he was given. Um, Masaru Sato. Mm-hmm. Um, but apparently he ended up reusing loads of music that he wrote for a Godzilla movie, and you oh, can really yeah. tell because it. It sounds like Godzilla music. Yeah. Really, like, loud hits. I was like, what? Where, where did that come from? We were, like, just out of the blue. It's like, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, that's what, that's what okay. I was I was, t- I was like, like... A guy got what? into a car. <laughs> Why did you do that? Yeah, that annoyed me too. Mm. <laughs> but you talked about the train sequence, and I thought, like, everything of that. Oh, well, actually... Yeah, that was, like, my favourite bit in the movie. That no, was no, insane. No, no, right. the, what I was getting at was the logistics of chucking the money out of the window. I kept saying to Chris, how, like, h- how does it get to, like, how did they get the money? Like, would it not have, like, come out of the bags? Like, wouldn't it have gotten hit by the, like, train coming up? I was like, I don't understand the logistics of chucking it out of the window. Well, they told them when to chuck it out. Yeah, but would it have landed, like, in a certain place? Like, I'm just, I mean, I'm just thinking logistics here. I was they like, I don't known. get this. They would have known. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been like, chuck it out here. I feel like it's the right thing to do. <laughs> right? I, just, I, just, I just didn't get it. And like the, the window that they chucked it out of, it was like angled. It was like slanted to give it like a bit of a, of a, a push in that way. I don't know. I feel like that was fine. I yeah, enjoyed it. I didn't care. I thought it was like really tense. Yeah, like it a was. a really great use of like a tight space. It was really claustrophobic and like keep going back and forth. And it's like, oh, I've got to make a call. I've got to get a coffee. I've got to do this. And yeah, I was like, oh my God. This is, I was like riveted. I was like in my chair, I was like, oh my God, what, what is happening? <laughs> like a, a real sense of anxiety there. Because yeah. you see, feel what's at stake. They filmed it like on a real like commuter, like passenger train. So like all the extras were just real people just had mm. to be on the train. Yeah. Hmm. 
That's kind of cool. Did they really chuck those yeah, bags out like, the window there? Yeah, they were like, what the fuck? <laughs> what, that got, what, what did that guy just do? <laughs> Chucked those bags out of the window. <laughs> Something else I wasn't a big fan of, which actually has nothing to do with the movie, is down to like the transfer that's on BFI player. Mm-hmm. It just well, does not look very good. Yeah, but it looked very like bit off, isn't it? It looked kind of blurry. Yeah, I can't it's explain like really it. Really low like quality. Fuzzy, yeah, but I, but I found that with like all the Kurosawa movies they've got on there. Like, I'm glad they've got loads of them on there, but most of them just look like shit. Yeah, but maybe like, it's just it's not supposed to fit on a TV. Maybe what? <laughs> no, like. Maybe like the sort, you know, like aspect sizes and stuff. Maybe they try to stretch it. I don't, think, to it. I don't I think know. It's just, just they're using like an old DVD transfer. Like they they've got a Kiru on there, and it's like the film's meant to be in four by three, and they've stretched it out to sixteen nine, and it looks like shit. Oh my god! This is what I mean. Why like, do they do these? There's things? a scene in this film um, where they cut outside, so there's like smoke bellowing out of an incinerator, mm. and that shot's supposed to be in color, but it was oh, just really? in black and white. I thought that they were like. Look, it's pink, and it shows it, and it's just in black and white. Like, yeah, it's supposed to be in color, but oh, the transfer they've got on here that is that's so annoying. funny. <laughs> that is annoying. I'll have to get like a Blu-ray of this. I hope it's available somewhere. I love that. Oh, it's pink. It's not pink. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow, really? Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just wish they would like update their masters and go on there because they just don't look good. Yeah, like just don't do it at all. Otherwise, <laughs> what's the point? Shame. They took all of them off for like a few months, and when they went back up, I was like, "Oh, surely they would have made them better now." But it's like just the same shit. I <laughs> know it's worse. <laughs> we fooled you all. <laughs> That's <God>. pretty sad. <laughs> cool. We want to get on to ratings. Yeah, sure. What are we doing that out of? Um, shoes. Okay. I mean, it is a shoe business. Yeah, it's a shit pick, but I couldn't think. You know of anything what? No, fuck you. We're going Gondos. Gondos. Here's okay. a nice name. <laughs> He does have a cool Sounds name. Sounds like a Muppet. Yeah, okay. That's well, pretty, pretty close rude to of you, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I like this movie a lot. It's not um, quite on the level of Seven Samurai, but very little is. But it's still a great movie, and I'm really looking forward to watching more of his stuff. I give it eight gondos out of ten. Potential to go up on the second viewing. It's a great movie. One of the great detective movies. Um, I'm really glad I watched it, and I would watch it again. Um, Probably sooner than I would watch Seven Samurai, but only because that movie is like four hours long. Yeah, that's um, ridiculous. Jesus. And I want to watch Ran again at some point because I've got the 4K. Uh, I'll, maybe when I watch that old. Yeah, and now I've got Max's old DVD. I'll give it a watch sometime. Yeah. Yeah, could do that. Cool. I'll give High and Low uh, nine gondos out of ten. It was absolutely fantastic. Six gondos out of ten. Cool. But boys and girls, that takes us on to my movie recommendation. Uh, what did I pick? That's a good question. I picked the movie Falling Down from 1993. It was directed by Joel Schumacher. This is a movie that was recommended by our good friend of the podcast, uh, Connor Reed. Shout out to you, man. This, 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 this one's for you. So, <laughs> Falling Down is about William. He's played by Michael Douglas. The man, the myth, the legend. Uh, mm. He's a man who becomes increasingly frustrated with the world around him and leads him to act out violently and commit just a slew of crimes as he traverses the bustling city, which pushes him further and further over the edge as he tries to make it to his daughter's birthday party on the other side of town, I believe. Yes. Yes. This is uh, one of those movies. So what do we think about it? This is one of those movies. One of those movies you watch and you're like, society, yeah? Oh, we live in a society. We live in one of those societies. Yeah. OG are talking Joker 2.0. One of those Joker type movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know what? I didn't even like think about it until... Oh, I don't even know. It was like three quarters of the way in and I was like wow this really is the uh, Joker origin story right here isn't it Jesus Christ they did it they jokered it up yeah mm. Joel Schumacher is a really weird director everything yeah. I've seen by him has been completely different in every way maybe he, I don't know, maybe that's a versatility it depends what he's done has he done he did he the done? Lost Boys that oh, was great okay. Um, okay. Phone Booth 
Oh, I love Phone Booth. Um, that sounds great. Did two Batman movies, mm-hmm. both of which suck. Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. Yeah, they're awful. Oh, is it one of them, the one with the penguin in it? No. No, it's not. No, you got um the Riddler, played by Jim Carrey. Uh-oh. And um, Mr. No. Freeze, played by Arnie. That's the one with George Clooney as Batman. <laughs> um, okay, I'm just not going to say anything now. <laughs> Sounds yeah, cool. he's a very weird director, mm. so I wasn't really sure what to think of this. I've like found his movies quite hit or miss. Yeah. But I had a really good time in this movie. Yeah, did you? Didn't sound like you did. Like I was um, talking to Chris because we were conversing whilst he was watching it because I'd watched it in the morning. Yeah, and it didn't seem like you were enjoying yeah, it. To for be me, honest, it, like, it, as it was like I think the first like twenty thirty minutes, I was like, I don't like this movie at all. And then like, as it went on, I was like, okay, I'm like a bit more into it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it took me a little while to get into it. I thought, uh, okay. <laughs> Bless you. I liked it. I actually liked it quite a bit. Um, maybe I'm not like too big on the presentation. That's probably what takes it down for me. Yeah. Um, it just looks kind of plain. And uh, I don't really gel with like how it looks or like the music really. And you know, like a lot of technical stuff. I don't know. I feel like they could have gone a bit harder with it, but... I appreciate like what it's going for from a thematic point of view, and I think Michael mm. Douglas is very good in the movie. Um, it was quite t- taxi drivery. Yeah, I, I like the. Um, I think the thing that I liked the most about it was like I felt all the characters had quite interesting personalities and stories and yeah. like arcs and stuff. Mm-hmm. Especially, what's, oh, what's that guy's name? But Pregand. Prendergast. That's the one. <laughs> I can't remember his name. Yeah, I, he was my favourite, actually. I don't know yeah. why, but there was just something about him that was very like... Uh, anyone, uh, either of you watched um, Orange is the New Black? Yeah. You know, yeah, jo- is it Joe Cap- Caputo? The, the guy who's the, oh, yeah. the guy who runs what, the... Caputo. Is that, is that, yeah. He, yeah, he okay, reminds yeah. me of him, and I was yeah. like, I like this guy, I'm rooting for him, and I really liked him. I like his dynamic with his wife and yeah. his arc that he goes through with that, where she's like, when are you... Coming home. And he's like, it's like I, his last I'm day coming on the home force. and I'm coming home. And Get that chicken like, ready. <laughs> it was like, you said it was your last day on the force. Just come home. What are they going to do? Fire you? Every time she like, called him out, I was like, just stop it yeah just leave him alone <laughs> and then get out and he's just like do you know what when i come home i want the chicken skinned fuck off <laughs> i was just like yeah, yeah fair enough that was his arm yeah. he told her to shut up yeah <laughs> and like all his like um all the other people who work at the station like keep making jokes about him dying on the force on his last day do you know what that that's, that's actually what i was fully expecting yeah, i was like so... what is this some sort of foreshadowing kind of shit yeah when he was like yes yeah, my last day on the force i was like oh he's gonna die isn't he? <laughs> and then yeah, they kept making jokes too. about it and i thought oh he's definitely gonna die <laughs> yeah but he didn't. No, his you're art right. was like he decides to become Badass. more cop, yeah. more of a cop. Mm. Like, oh, okay. I, 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 I don't know. I would have just left. <laughs> it's a good way to end your uh, cop uh, career, I guess. But he didn't end it. He just kept going. Did he not? Well, I mean, did he not retire after that? Well, it was no. later that day, wasn't it? No, he said, like, oh, my wife's going to be mad at me when I tell her that I'm still a cop. Oh, <laughs> uh, right. No, I've... Oh, I thought maybe he was just retiring because he was like <laughs> older. I he don't know. Maybe yeah, that was like, something. This isn't too bad, actually. <laughs> <laughs> he felt the power. He had the power in the palm of his hand. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Michael Douglas was good, though. I think yeah, he's he was really insane. good. It was a massive standout performance of his. I haven't seen him in much, though. No, I, I, I Ant Man. <laughs> nah, whatever. Oh, really? Uh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, he's in those ones. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't even know who he was, to yeah. be honest, until afterwards, because I, <laughs> Chris just downloaded the film, and it was just like falling down, it was just like on my desktop home screen, and there was like no context to it, and I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to watch this, didn't know who was in it, didn't know what it was about, yeah. <laughs> just, it was it's just like there. the idea of this guy who's like been pushed way too far by the restraint of the society that he lives, that he lives in. Mm. Like, Clearly, he's been like ground into the dirt up until this point. Yeah, Just, like, a day where he, he at snapped, his last yeah. breaking point. Um, and like he has this line, I think, where he's like, "I'm just trying to get home for my daughter's birthday party." 
Mm. It's like every time he like tries to do anything, he's just stopped by by societal inconveniences. It's like I think we've all had those days. As Hannah Montana once said, everybody has those days. Yeah. it really was one of those days, you know, where fucking everything yeah, like, just pisses you off. My, I think my favourite part of the whole thing, which is so stupid, because it's, so, it's like just a stupid scene, but like where he goes into <laughs> that um, Wendy's or whatever, and they're like, oh, we stopped selling breakfast now, and he's like got his machine gun yeah, thing out, like, and he's we like, we stopped no, selling we breakfast haven't. at 11, and he looks at his watch, <laughs> it's no, like, at, no, at 11, half 30, 11, and it was and like it was two like minutes past. 11.34 or something. <laughs> <laughs> that bit actually fucking killed me. I was like, that, that is actually how I feel if I'm hungry enough. Yeah. And I've gone into somewhere and, and they told me no. And like threatens them to make him <laughs> breakfast. And he's like, you know what? I've changed my mind. I do want lunch. And then he's like, look at this burger. That looks nothing like that burger up there. And it's like, yes. Yeah, actually. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the burger dilemma. We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, he was also kind of a fucker. Oh, he was an yeah. arsehole, to be honest. I didn't really like him in all. Yeah. I liked him in the same way that I hated him. Do you know what I mean? Like, he was interesting. He, he was like a vehicle but I didn't for like like him. everything you hate about the minutiae of everyday life. Yeah. But it's told through the lens of this guy who's kind of a bastard. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I was rooting for him because I was like, yeah, that's really fucking annoying. I agree. Mm. But then I was like, oh, but I don't like you that much, so I don't really care. Well, I guess there's like <laughs> the, a lot of people have been pushed to this extreme where it's like, Everybody has their breaking point, mm. but I feel like he was in a position where, like, he was already kind of a dick. So, like, that's mm. the kind of person who would do this kind of thing yeah. if they were pushed that far. Like, when he goes to that, well, this oh, I'm going like backwards and forwards in this movie now, but where he uh, goes into that store and then was like, set 85 cents for a can of drink is too much, call it 50. And he's like, no. And he starts <laughs> like, bashing off this shop and then he goes the he goes 50 and then he just pays for it and then yeah leaves. he goes on a rant about people coming into his country as well yeah <laughs> okay oh yeah that that was like i was kind of like that was a little bit uncalled for but yeah. then it gets worse when they go to that gun store or whatever and that guy's like yeah because and then doesn't he say the n-word and i was yeah, like he said that over and over again i like over cringed over i was like oh again you meet the nazi guy yeah, yeah. the neo-nazi who's yeah. like he doesn't we're the agree same with, person and he's like no yeah, we're not like, we're the same you and i <laughs> but like they clearly have very different ideals it's just like mm. there are a lot of people identify with people they know nothing about just because they do like some things you know like this is the guy the like what do you do you like Held up a McDonald's. Yeah, or something. I'm going to identify yeah, with him because yeah. he's like against the system. Mm. I am also against the system, but, but like, he's not against very different yeah. kind of ways. <laughs> like there's being, uh, what's it, down with the government or whatever and society, and then there's being a down Nazi. with human people. Yeah. <laughs> like what was it when he like kicks those um, people out of his store because they're boyfriends or whatever? Yeah. And I was just like. Why did they go in there in the first place? Yeah. That was like my thought because there like, was like, almost like no context to it. It was just like, you need to see what this guy is like. So we're going to just stick two boyfriends in here and let this guy go batshit. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay. That guy is insane. He reminds me a lot of um, Dennis Hopper in Blue Velvet. Like yeah. just how he keeps like <laughs> going crazy at people. He has this like really distinct way of talking, like keeps repeating the same phrases and stuff. It's like he's jittery. He reminded me of. Well, a little bit of like a who's that um that guy in the Simpsons who owns the army store kind of reminds me of that guy. Oh, it's yeah. like proper jittery. I can't remember his name. The guy with one arm. Yeah, he's yeah. like never in it though. But yeah, him. Yeah, it's all... <laughs> just like insane ramblings and stuff. Well, to own a store like that, I feel like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, no. not be all the way there. But then know. that is America, though, isn't it? Like. Isn't it oh, kind yeah. of? Isn't yeah? Isn't that thing kind of normal though? Like you wouldn't even you wouldn't even dream of having shit like that in England, but. But I thought it was about America. Yeah, oh, yeah, it 100%, was about America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was about like. Which is why it makes sense. The divide between the rich and the poor, and like the new way and the old way clashing, and I think it was also about like living in a city and like mm. what that can do to a person, and how busy cities can stress people out. Oh yeah, like, like that traffic jam at the beginning made me just want to punch myself in yeah. the throat. But we've all been there, you know. Yeah, like, I was in we one live just in a yesterday. really big, uh, <laughs> well, not a really big city, but it's very 
dense this city but very packed with people sorry not north no, it's north end that is the work that's the offender like you go through north end and you're there for four hours trying to get through to to town because you cannot yeah, get right, through that so street that can like, <laughs> that'll I drive can me crazy yeah. you and you're like this is uh, I'm one, at my breaking point. Yeah, one day we'll see Max has just like gone crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think I get out of here any time I can? You know, mm. What do you think I'm going to Cornwall then a bit? I don't like, blame you. I really don't. <laughs> I have to take every opportunity I feel to like leave Cornwall this city. Cornwall could be just as bad though if you're thinking it's about like not. no, because it's massive. So it's like you're going to get stuck somewhere. It's massive, and there are like less people per square inch i guess it's not no, as yeah, condensed as it is here no this city is actually disgraceful like i didn't realize how bad it actually was i mean i was in like the little just like a couple of hours ago <laughs> i'll tell you a story about when i was in the little a couple of hours ago <laughs> i was walking down the aisle and like these people were just like in the aisle and like they just stood there like in yeah the middle of the aisle yeah but they were like in a line <laughs> like facing away from me and I was just like trying to get a, like a bell pepper. I was like, I just want to get a bell pepper. I'm like trying to get past these people. I'm like, that could be a moment where you just like, if you were right at your breaking point, that could send you over the edge. Like, oh my god! Like, there's a bunch of things like living in a big city does. That like, is so like, true. That just like, happens all the time. But like, like, you have to be able to deal with it. Oh no! But the thing is, you I guess you kind of do because you kind of get used to it. But. Oh yeah. It might, do you know what? I think it might just that that little is something else though. Like when Max was like, "Oh, Darcy, go get some stuff for this curry." I was like, "Okay, cool, whatever." Yeah, you sent me to a and, war zone, Max. You like called me up and like I heard like gunshots going. <laughs> 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 and so I got to the little, but I don't, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> and I was like, Max, they don't have these like things because there's like people doing like their fucking weekly shop. And he's like, "What? They don't even have lemons?" And I was like, yeah, they honest to God that they don't have these things because there's people everywhere. I took all the lemons. <laughs> I hate that little so much. <laughs> like, it's good for value, but it's a shit. Like, it's got that IKEA like system as well where you value. can't, like, get back yeah. through it. Yeah, I hate yeah. That place. You walk in the I indoor, hate you better place. buy something. Otherwise, you are looking mighty shifty going yeah. out the door with nothing in your hand. Yeah. You, you, anything. But then, like, it costs, like, nothing in there. Like, you have to, it's just uh, anything will do. I hate it in there. I hate going in there. But that's why I quite related to the movie in that way. Like, what was that guy who like came up to him and he was like, he said he was homeless and he was like asking for money or like literally anything he'd squeeze out of the guy. Oh, and he was like, I haven't eaten in days, and he's eating as he's <laughs> saying it. That was fucking Come funny. Come on, man, I haven't eaten in days. He's eating like a burger. Yeah, and he's like, except this thing. <laughs> except this. <laughs> Crazy. He's like, here, have this briefcase. It was just like. Empty. A, a lunch. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, I had an apple and he chucked it at him. That was yeah. jokes. <laughs> That's happened tons of times to me. Yeah. You know? What, loads, people have chucked apples of... at you? No, but like people, they come up to you and they ask you for money and yeah, like, yeah, clearly yeah. they have money. <laughs> like, oh, no, like, but I think some of the worst ones are when, um, when I was back in Luton, I, I had this guy come up to me. And he was like, do you have any money? I need to pay my, um, my you know, you get the key meters. And I was like, no, not really. And he went, well, I don't want to be rude, but like, there's a cash machine right over there. And I was like, what? And he's like, I'll take you over to the cash machine. And I thought, yeah. I'm not getting attacked by some guy. So I took out 20 fucking pounds because they didn't even have 10 pound notes. I was no. like, you've taken this 20 fucking pound from me because I'm not getting That's beaten insane. up in the middle of the streets in Luton. I'm just not doing it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's insane. Well, that happened yesterday. <laughs> no, this was like <laughs> two years ago. It was so annoying. I know, you, go, you go back to Luton <laughs> to cat sit for your mum. And, that, and that's when you it happened again. <laughs> that, that, no, the person who did it will be listening and going, I remember I saw you at the bus stop uh, two years ago and I asked you for £20 from the cash machine. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, that's, that scene where he like, gives the, the homeless guy his briefcase is interesting. So um, apparently like, the two briefcases or like the two bags he's got are meant to be like metaphors where his like briefcase is meant to be his like more responsible side and his mm -hmm. bag is like the bag like filled with guns as him like turning to like the nihilism and violence <laughs> so like him giving up his briefcase was him like just completely saying goodbye to that responsible life and then like just going straight down the life of dark he ends up going straight yeah. joker mode yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm going joker mode <laughs> <laughs> what it felt like <laughs> that is basically where it all went to complete another fucking shit though really like yeah like, when, like, after that those people that like he he beats up 
because they like came up to him and said, "You're in our neighborhood. Oh, get yeah. out of here!" So he beats them what up with the baseball bat. What if it was in bat. English? I would read it. And then it. like they come up to him again and do like a drive-by shooting, and they completely they just like murder everyone who was there. And, and he don't walks hit straight him past all. them all. <laughs> yeah. It what was just like hilarious. Yeah, it doesn't make. Yeah. <laughs> what did he say? It was like um. Ah, fuck. He, like, goes up to them. He's like, take some shooting lessons, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, like, so chipper when he says it. Oh, so, that bit was mental. Like, all these people are just, like, scrambling over these, like, wounded people. And he's just, like, he just walks straight over them. And I'm like, wow. I mean, that's, that's mad. He has, a, he, he has a lot of luck in this movie. It's like a, watching a person who has all mm. the luck in the world. Because he could have been killed just that any point yeah it kind of feels like the unluckiest human alive with the luckiest streak it was like the weirdest like film what would you do if you had all the luck in the world but you just used that luck for evil <laughs> <laughs> that's this guy right here a while back we did um that video game episode we talked about um the postal movie based yeah. on those games oh, yeah. and like watching this i was like this is exactly what a postal movie should be like, this really reminds me of those games. I think mm-hmm. they might actually be like quite inspired by this movie, but like yeah. it's exactly the kind of thing they're going for. Like this critique of America. Don't say that. Like... Uve Ball might be listening. No, I don't care. You... Uve, come on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on the pod. <laughs> oh, you know, he him might try and beat us up. <laughs> he tried to. He, do you? Did what? you ever hear about him like boxing loads of critics? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> Exactly. Years ago, what? years ago, he it. um, he like said if there's any like critics who want to like fight him, they'll have like a one to one like boxing match, and like loads <laughs> of critics were like, oh yeah, that'll be fun, that'll be fine. They didn't know that he was like a professional boxer yeah. years prior, so like they all like got beaten a shit out. Yeah, of course they did. Like they all got destroyed. <laughs> I'll be honest, that is kind of funny though. Like if if you couldn't be bothered to look up the fact that he used to do that, then. I guess you're going to get beaten the shit out of really, aren't you? <laughs> no, it's kind of funny. It is also about like how like the work grind can like wear you down, like yeah. take literal like time from you. It, there was a part where he sees his daughter again. I guess he hadn't seen her in so long, but he was just trying to get to her birthday party. And he says, uh, "How'd you get so big? I missed it. They stole it from me." And I was like, "That's kind of sad." <laughs> He couldn't even like watch his daughter grow up. I mean, like part of that is because he was an asshole and like he wasn't given access to his child. Um, mm. Or like he, like, they got divorced because he was an asshole, you know. But that that's a real thing. Yeah, thing. it's like the ending's kind of sad. Like obviously he dies, and it like the last shot is like this happy like family video of them all together. It's quite mm-hmm. sad. Cause, like. There's also like another scene earlier on where they show another video of him like snapping at them and it shows what he became. It's almost oh, like yeah, that was you horrible. see the like stress and working loads. It's kind of like destroyed him where he used mm-hmm. to be like this really nice, wholesome family man and like he just kind of like was like just grinded down I feel like until he's like about this the, big uh, ball of stress and the aggression. The nine to five grind. Yeah. Not yeah. necessarily. I don't know. I don't know. That, the that, 10 hour shift grind. Yeah, the... Oh, what the driving home in this? Grind. To be fair, I feel like a lot of it probably also can come down to a uh, you know when you're because my sister works in the in the big city and like if she had a car, I feel like that film would be like you know you know when you just seen like all these all this traffic shit and people like beeping and shouting shit yeah. at each other and stuff <laughs> and I feel like that's the kind of thing that I could imagine it being like. But yeah, I don't know. I feel I don't know. I just um. I'm pretty sure I, I just, read yeah, that full opening time shit. scene of them like all stuck in traffic. It's like a reference to the opening of um, Fellini's Eight and a Half. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it begins the same way. It's just uncomfortable, I, got to see I think. At some point. Yeah, it is very sweaty. And uh, like that. Like, yeah, this is another film that you don't want to watch. The around the cars you're, and yeah. just like, people are shouting at each other and all that. It's like, oh, man. Everyone's I mean, pissed off. Back when I used to work 10-hour shifts in construction... That's like the kind of thing that, I mean, I didn't drive there. I used to, like, either I would rely on the bus or I would walk home. Um, but that's the kind of thing where, like, if you work these long shifts, you count the minutes, you know? Yeah. And, like, in between shifts, you're like, okay, I have this much time to, like, get home. And then I have 
this much time when I'm at home to just relax and enjoy myself. What am I going to do? How am yeah. I going to relax and enjoy myself? I'll be honest, myself? I think about that already. Yeah. And I'm not even at that stage where I'm working loads or anything, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Like I'm not at the 10 hour rise and grind providing for mm-hmm. a family and that kind of shit. Yeah, there but was I do a often point think about that. You know I, I mean? didn't see my house in daylight for months. Yeah, like I've forgotten just, what it looked like. I've, I just feel, yeah, I, I guess it's also like a, I don't know, like a good uh, commentary on like a, how we all have to work for hours and hours, get pittance for it, and then struggle to get by because you've got other responsibilities to look after and all that other kind of shit. And but that's the grind sti- set, Darcy. It's still You've got to wake up, now, grind, and go to sleep, and then grind some more. You, if you're not dreaming about being on the grind, you're not working hard enough. I just, I just feel like it's. I obviously know that you are joking, but I feel We're like there are the, people. I am not joking. Are, we are all on the twenty-four hour grind set. Choo choo, motherfucker. Let's get that bread. Quack quack. But still, I think it's. I just think it's pretty fucking sad if, like, the only thing you're ever doing with your life is going to work and then going to bed, and then going to work and then going to bed. I just don't. Sure, it's sad, but a lot of people don't have a choice. No, but I think it's just no way to live. But that's yeah, that's not a people problem. That is a. And we live in a society, but it's true. It's kind of true to be honest. One of those Joker society problems. Well, it's down to. You know, if people got better pay and didn't have to work five days a week, they could just work four. Like, my mum yeah. quit one of her days a week. Like, you know, sometimes I think people just deserve more than four hours a day oh, yeah. off. You know what I mean? I'm I'm well on that hype of the three-day work week. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> well, I am on a three-day you know? work week, technically. But, like, oh, God. And, and, and a lot of this was, like, money spent well like, you didn't need to be spent on like it was like a commentary on mm. like the golfing scene and like how uh golfing fields like take up an insane amount of uh property or like land yeah um, they don't need to and i love that jab at like all the golfers and fucking that guy who like basically died because he had a heart attack oh and he's like course. and he you're like, going to die yeah. now and i just thought was it now you're gonna die wearing that stupid little hat how does it feel <laughs> That was fucking hilarious. I'm not going to lie. I actually thought that was quite funny. Uh, he was having a heart attack. Oh, man, that was so good. Yeah, like, like, part of me thought, oh, yeah, this is quite dark. And then another part of me was like, no, nah, that's funny. Mm. <laughs> I don't care. Not that commentary, because I'd not really thought about it that much before, but it was like they were con- constructing something on the road in one of these streets. And he, he, he was like, that's bullshit. And then he just goes up to the guy and he's like, uh, what's wrong with the street? And he, like, grinds him down. He's like, Oh, nothing's wrong with the street, but like they had to, they're just building there so they could spend all the money in their budget so that they would get the same amount of money in their budget in the next year. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> you see, this stuff happens. I'm sure it does, you know? And yeah, of course it probably does. I mean, that, well, I guess that kind of thing does sort of make sense. Or like in what way? Because, like, sense in, like, well, I was, was but if you'd have finished, finished with Shintish. No, I think no stuff like, like why that. Why they make, would do that for yeah, the budget, like it, or like it, why? I feel, I feel like it does make sense because people kind of do that kind of stuff all the time, where they're like, "Oh, we kind of." I mean, it, it depends on like the situation, but I know that there have been points where people are like, "I think we should spend some of this extra money that we've got here because we might not have it again later, or it won't be allocated, or." It's going to get but then cut, that's like or that saying, kind of shit as well. There's nothing we can spend this money on, so we have to invent something to spend this money on. When that's just not the case. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I don't know why they couldn't have just like gone. Hey, there's some other issue that we could find here rather than should we just like dig a hole in in the street? Because <laughs> sure, there's going to be off. something to find, isn't there? Yeah, there's going to yeah. be something. But then it wouldn't be as good of a, a plot point if they had just <laughs> went. Actually, those plants do need redoing. As opposed to, mm. this tarmac is perfectly fine. Let's just fuck it up for the sake of it. Yes, I just fire my bazooka into sense. the hole. <laughs> that was insane. The kid fucking <laughs> going up cameras? to him and being like, uh... <laughs> yeah. with the kid showing him how to use the bazooka. <laughs> mm. uh, how did you learn all this? <laughs> this on, like, I just found it on, like, in a book or something. I don't know. I don't know where he found it. Just stuff that kids know these days. You yeah. Can, you can look at it. It's even worse now. Kids know way more than you do about 
the military and stuff. They're leaking documents. They're leaking classified documents, these kids. <laughs> Just on like online games. Like, yeah, Maybe they it. are. Those tank isn't accurate to what they do in the actual military. And the, I feel like I saw that like a couple of days ago. Like, this online game and there were like people who played the game. They were like, this tank isn't accurate to what it actually is here. I found this... um document about how the tank was built yeah <laughs> yeah i read about that it's <laughs> crazy <laughs> and the game people had to be like you can't share these documents we'll all go to jail <laughs> yeah oh man that was funny yeah got anything else to add don't think so just a it's, it's a pretty tight movie yeah i feel yeah. like it's, it's pretty concise pretty it's kind pretty of, funny yeah. um but the comedy comes from like this is how it is today right you go through these tribulations and you watch a guy Go insane. Um, you're like, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a dickhead, but I get it. <laughs> yeah, why he goes so insane. Mm, 100% relatable. Takes place over the course of a day. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a lot to say. I was pretty happy when he killed that Nazi. <laughs> yeah. He, but he deserved to go. Out of anyone in this movie, it was going to be that guy. Yeah. I was thinking, like, why is this guy so mad? Like, right at the beginning when he was, like, busting up that shot. <laughs> What's, what's this guy's damage? Oh, yeah, but I it thought, does yeah. show you enough, of it and you're like, oh, okay, I get it. Like, I understand what kind of drove him to this point. As an, it has a pretty good third act in that sense. Yeah, like, he all comes together, and he sees his daughter, and he pulls out. He's like, "We'll do it like an old western shootout." And oh he, my god! Prendergast pulls the gun, shoots him. He only had a water gun. He's like, oh, "I would have got you." Yeah, and he like falls. He like falls into the sea over this like pit but it's like this really brittle wood that like clearly anybody could have fallen into it whenever such a shoddily like, they should have repaired that that's where they should have put the money in mm, <laughs> not, not agree. doing that street that like didn't have anything wrong with it just like make it the pier new again that is true but then it wouldn't have ended the same would it if he had just backed up against the wood and been like ah oh, damn <laughs> could have still fallen over oh maybe Whatever. Let's let's rate this sucker. What do you want to rate it out of? Prendergast. That's a funny name. Prendergast. It's great. We yeah. can fit your name on the cake. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this was a fun movie. I wasn't like the biggest fan of it in the world. Like Max said earlier, I didn't get a lot out of the presentation or anything. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. It's a fun like action comedy thriller, I guess. Um, so yeah, I'll give it like six Prendergasts out of ten. Yeah, fun stuff. I'll give it seven Prendergasts out of ten. Eight Prendergasts out of ten. Sick. That was great. I near, it took all of my being to be able to say that name. I was like, okay, Darcy, think about it when you're saying it instead of just going <laughs> like I normally do. Um, a movie. A movie movie. The final movie. The final end movie to end the pod the movie movie for the free for all. Darcy's going insane. I've, um, the having, heat is getting to it. <laughs> I'm having a podcast drunk. Um, yeah, so I picked At Eternity's Gate um, from 2018. Um, essentially, do you know what? I had this really cool note. I was going to be like, yeah, it's a dedicated title uh, from a painting of the same name. But then I realised that that sounded really stupid, and then I said it in a stupid way, and now I've made it sound even more stupid. But well, yeah, it's out there now. Now yeah. we know. The more you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's a, a great little painting, which is actually strangely enough, this film is supposedly supposed to be the um, was it like the two-ish months before um, he died. Van Gogh, sorry, this movie's about Van Gogh. This came out two months before he died. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, the setting of the movie is meant to be from two months before he died, which is also the same time that he painted At Eternity's Gate, which is probably why it's been named after that painting. But um, it's also a cool name. Um, there is, do you know what? I think I might let you guys uh, take the reins for a little while because what? I have... So much shit to say. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna oh, bounce yeah. off. But so I have so like, you describe the movie <laughs> for me. <laughs> oh, I probably should. I probably should. Actually. Probably should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's this um, about? So this uh, movie is about the last 
couple years of um, Van Gogh's life where he's living in, is it Arles? Arles? How, how do I speak? Arles? Somewhere in France. He's in France. He lives in France. South France. Um, where he's uh, painting um, his uh, works and uh, kind of like the things that happened to him. So, you know, the iconic things where he's like cut off his ear and he goes to hospital, uh, this uh, asylums and things like that. And um, yeah, it's just basically about, um, yeah, the last couple of years of his life. And the whole movie is meant to be this kind of commentary on the controversy, I quote unquote, about how uh, Van Gogh didn't actually die by suicide. He died by accident. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm going to bounce in with things because I've got a fucking million notes. So really? if you guys want to start and I'll jump. I just I, I googled at Eternity's Gate the painting and I'm just looking at it like it's horrific, <laughs> isn't it? It's um basically it's uh, to to explain to people who haven't uh, I'm mostly talking to Chris now. It's a painting of a guy who um was wasn't he like a he was like a soldier or um like a like a patient at one of these uh, places. Oh yeah, I've seen that picture. Yeah, and, uh, it's just essentially uh, it's based on a like drawing that he did about two weeks before that or something and then he started making this lithograph and that's what that uh painting has basically become um yeah and it's just based on this guy who yeah looks like he's about to die <laughs> it's, re it's really sad. depressing yeah like um there is so many like depressing aspects to uh van gogh's little life to be fair and it's all just uh emphasized in this movie and uh I fucking love this movie. Mm -hmm. Like, I I go on like my little my little nerdy rants because like there's lots of like a uh, pretty like uses of uh, yellow sunflowers, blues, greens, basically all of France is fucking gorgeous. Um, talking about <laughs> fucking sorry guys, that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> um, all these other like um painters and like uh, other people that he's met in his lifetime and all these people basically snubbed him because he was the like the poor madman guy who was a failure but supposedly uh when yeah when he so there's a scene where he goes to the um asylum and his brother comes to visit him supposedly at that point they they wouldn't have known it then because it was like 1870 or whatever fucking year it was um uh, th th like nowadays they would have said that he probably had some sort of schizoaffective disorder because he just wasn't like quite right in the head and stuff like you get the POV shots and stuff from like his views and um, it, yeah it's quite fascinating to uh, to kind of see how he's kind of like lived his life considering just how kind of like ill and poor and um, ostracized I guess he was like as an artist like Mm -hmm. No one really cared about him or his works. Like, I think he sold two paintings in his whole lifetime. So it was, like, really, it was like really dour. But, like, the film itself is, like, really pretty. So, it like, I don't know. It's, like, almost like, God, this is so depressing. But it looks really nice. Like, you just look at all these lovely, like, things. But yeah, it's really sad. I don't think a lot of people got him. No one really no. understood what he was going for. Like, there's that um, scene where he's, like, painting... Uh, I mean, like the woods or something, <laughs> and he's like painting the roots of a tree rather than the actual tree. And there's a bunch of like school children, oh, yeah. and, like a school teacher, all like berating him and saying, "Why are you painting roots and not trees?" Yeah, <laughs> I, I think uh, I've, uh, I think he had that sort of mentality where he was trying to show because because he says it like multiple times in the film where he's like. I want to show people what they can't see. I can see these things that other people can't. And I was like, hmm. Like nowadays that would sound sus, but it makes sense now. But it's it's kind of one of those things where he had, he had like a true vision. Like he's one of those people that you don't get very often in like a lifetime, you know. And I think because of that, he um he kind of suffered as a result. But like when you think of, because uh, he's a post-impressionist or whatever, um, when you compare him to uh, the Oscar Isaacs guy, I can't pronounce this artist's name, like Gal Galgain or something. G G I don't. Know, I need some sort of like e like phonetic yeah. thing underneath me so I can pronounce his name. I don't know. I'm like trying no, to look I, him up. It's but a, he's very low on the. Why is he not showing up? <laughs> it's a G 
G A U G U I N. Yeah. But I can't remember his first name either. His first, his real first name is Henri, I think. But um, yeah. So he was also a post impressionist. But God, you go on Google and like he's like the bottom actor, and his name is not there. Oh. <laughs> so that's great. Thanks, Google. Oh right, yeah. No, I was just because uh, I looked up the painter afterwards, and a lot of his artworks aren't actually like. Because I didn't really know about him, to be honest, until this film. And supposedly a lot of his artwork isn't in, like, the UK. Um, All of his work is mostly in, like, America, Canada, and places in Europe, like Amsterdam and things like that. What's his name? Paul is his actual name. Paul. Well, I say Paul. It's not actually Paul, but... Eugene he had a very long Henry name. Paul Galgwen. Yeah, well, how do you pronounce his last Gal- name? No, I know. It's Galgwen. Yeah. But if you actually look at his artworks compared to Van Gogh's, like, I'm going to be honest, like, his works aren't that good, to be honest. But um, there's a portrait that he did of Van Gogh, and it's called Man in the Red Beret or something. And that's in Amsterdam. And that's actually pretty cool. It's just like a <laughs> side profile of Van Gogh wearing a, a red beret. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. But, um, yeah, I just think Van Gogh had something that no one else had and everyone was just like, what the fuck is this? He was not appreciated in his time. Definitely not. There's a lot of the talk like, um, I make paintings for people who haven't been born yet. Yeah, pretty much. That was like a really interesting through line. Mm. Um, He is one of the best ever. Uh, uh, That's not very controversial, but... I feel like I've seen a few depictions of Van Gogh in This is my favourite one, that. probably. Um, I guess it's... I haven't seen all that much, to be honest. I've seen this. I saw that movie, Loving Vincent. Yeah, where, which um, interestingly, like, basically tells the exact same story. It's like mm-hmm. the last, like, whatever amount of time is of his life. Mm. Also, um, I'm pretty sure it follows the same theory that he didn't kill himself, that someone killed him like by accident. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, stuff like that wouldn't really surprise me, considering how. But then there was, I guess it's a bit touch and go, really, isn't it? Because someone probably could have killed him because he was like literally not with it. But then also, mm-hmm. he's not quite with it. So like, no, well, I don't think anyone's ever really gonna know. Yeah. I guess, like, yeah, it, it's just a sad movie, you know, and it was kind of a sad character. I feel mm. like, I don't, like, every time I see him depicted, I'm like, here's this man, and he was sad all the time. And it's like, if I had, like, one criticism to level against, like, to any of those, I would be like, like, surely not. Surely he had, like, some parts where he was like, this is all right, actually. There are glimpses of that in this movie, but for the most part, He's very upset, like a lot for a lot of it, and mm. I don't know. I just feel like it can't all be horrendous. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like if you like the the more I like research into him, and the more like the places that he's been, because he's obviously like he's been to like um a couple of asylums and like like he was like fucking poor. Uh, I don't know, like, the more I read about him, the more I'm just like, he probably was depressed all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, there's that theory, I don't know if it's true or not, but, you know, that theory that he uh, he wants to bring himself some joy, so he drinks yellow paint and stuff like that. Like, it's just, right. it's like... Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, like, it's just, um, I, I think he was. I, I genuinely believe he was probably, like, one of the saddest people in history. Yeah. But I don't think that's much on him than it is the circumstances that surround him. Like... Like I said, yeah, he wasn't appreciated. He was ostracized. He painted, but he was poor. He was really mentally not well. And then he cut off his own ear. And you know what I mean? Like, there's just a lot of things that make me think he just wasn't with it. And obviously, back then, I think medicine and, you know, uh, treatments and stuff probably weren't available to, you know, it's, it's all these kind of yeah. things. I think he probably was depressed as shit. And. That's kind of the be all or end all of my observations of it, to be honest. Yeah, I do appreciate that there is moments of like happiness. I in think there. there should be though. Mm-hmm. I like, feel like it's it, you know, like if if it was going to be, you know, like yellow was his favorite color. Like, why is yellow your favorite color? Like, most people who are 
sad as fuck. Their favorite color is not yellow. Yeah, like you even know what I mean? like, there's something there. I feel like most of like the happier moments happen early on, where he's like painting and he's like in nature and he's kind of like mm-hmm. really just in love with the beauty of the world. And even like later on, as it's like his mind's like kind of going and he's like just kind of losing it more and more. Anytime he talks to someone about art and about painting, he just like seems so filled with joy and excitement about yeah, it. I guess yeah. it's, yes, the, uh, his form of expression when people don't get him, he's like, here's a, here's a thing. Flowers wither and die, but paintings don't, and that kind of thing. And I, I really appreciate that because that's the kind of thing that I take from art as well is that, nothing dies but then i've had this conversation so many fucking times on the podcast i'm not having it again but um that's what i really liked about this kind of movie was that it kind of uh reignited my kind of hope in like what art is and how it's like seen and i mean sad enough you know his 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 life wasn't great but um it had to be someone i guess and i guess it was him um i don't know just like he's just such a like a visionary like it's it's just madness like to think that he like painted the starry night from memory as well like he, he mm-hmm. just, it was, oh, it's fucking crazy the stuff that he could do and i'm just like oh it's just it's just not fair really is it it's just not fair at all like um you know those scenes where he's like out um in the sunflower fields and stuff and yeah. he's like painting landscapes around that area yeah. supposedly there are like 11 paintings just of sunflowers and then there's like another 36 of the landscapes that are around there which means he was probably out there like almost every day just painting yeah well i mean he has that moment where he's like i don't like being inside so i go outside yeah feels claustrophobic he probably has like feels trapped a quadrillion paintings because he was probably painting like every hour of the day to be honest that's it. That's what it seemed like, anyway. Like he's literally what he's. Uh, there's that part where he's like in his room and he just paints a pair of shoes. Like I never go yeah. home, look at a pair of shoes, and go, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna draw them." But like I don't know. It's just... I might just draw some <laughs> shoes. Why not? I'll do that. He like goes into um the room where Paul is uh uh painting the woman, mm. um, the landlady or something, and then like he like sets up his own easel and he starts painting her as well i was like yeah this is awkward <laughs> yeah like he's just drawing and he's like got like proper full out like like sculpting something i actually like that as well where um paul kind of turns to him and goes this uh this looks more like sculpture and then it yeah. does painting and i was like that's literally what it is though like you're you're like sculpting out a a piece of history if that makes sense like you mm-hmm. are you are like taking down this like moment because like when the flowers die the image is still here like that's what i really like about you know like photography and shit as well like i don't know like one day let's be honest the ice caps are gonna be gone but there was some footage somewhere that said that they were here you know i mean like i love that kind of thing where it's just like it existed uh, and someone was able to express it in some form of like yeah sadly way. when the ice caps melt there won't be anybody around to look at those pictures, but you know they'd, they'd be there. <laughs> it was the only example until I they're could incinerated think of. by the sun. <laughs> yeah, good point. Good point. Um, For a that, little bit. That's coming very soon. I already know coming it. Coming soon to a cinema <laughs> near you. <laughs> We're all gonna die. Oh no! That oh my god! Like the I swear to you, like we are literally like so close to the end. I don't know what it was about people in that time. It's just like they looked at those paintings and they thought that's not it. Because it, it completely baffles me now. Mm. I'm really, uh, I'm really trying to just be like, well, yeah, I mean, that's not. But <laughs> they're know. all brilliant. Yeah. I, how can how can they look at that and be like, that's not anything? Why are you painting those flowers? You, you're weird. Like, yeah, what I do you don't mean? get it. How either. can you like this this guy, but then on the other side of the coin, praise all these other great artists like Monet or like like I mean, Picasso was, I think, a bit later but, yeah he was um, yeah like like all these like really great fucking artists that we've seen and, and yeah they're, like having conversations about i think oscar isaac and willem dafoe were like oh yeah and these guys they weren't like they're, they're just like stuck in their ways and they do the same thing over and over again but it's like nowadays we're like why oh, that just brilliant it's like um it was it's like fan worship and all that it's like mm. w- w- looking at uh like musicians nowadays or like actors and being like that's yeah. them and like oh they kind of uh didn't do too well on this new album. Maybe it was like that. 
No. Yeah, maybe maybe it was um, they weren't ready for Van Gogh, which is basically no. what he says at the end of the film. He's like, you people just aren't ready for me. <laughs> like, yeah, you and, guys aren't you ready know. for this, but your kids will love it. Yeah, just like, like the it's... Back to the Future guy. <laughs> But it's kind of true, though. Like, I think he, I think he already knew. Like, when he was uh, creating his stuff, he was like, "You guys are not gonna like this." But yeah, I don't know why because it's so great. But I think uh, back in the day, they didn't really have a lot of this. How um, I can only compare it to like uh, Jackson Pollock, really. You know, like the thick, like glossy yeah. paint like it's so like really quick thick and shit, yeah quick yeah quick and texturized and like and they're like oh it doesn't even really look like that thing and they yeah they weren't ready for that they <laughs> they were like oh what the lady's got yellow skin but she's like really pale and it's like no this is like the yeah. sunshiny light or whatever but yeah th- yeah they weren't ready for him but like i mean they say paintings have to be painted fast yeah and Paul's too quickly, like, what yeah. are you doing like <laughs> you're like why do you paint like that? And yeah, because like, paintings have to be painted fast. Like, yeah, they like paint trying like to really capture a moment. I don't flat, know. Don't exactly, that's it. And when you're trying to capture a moment like that, it's a bit like um, everything changes so much, you know. Yeah, and you have to and get it done quickly. Yeah, but I'm I mean, like, for yeah. as, much, as fast as he painted, like how? Oh my god, <laughs> you know. Sometimes that's like the only thing you could like create. Those can't be. Those paintings can't be painted if like he worked really slowly, you know. Yeah, that, that it, had to be yeah, like that. that. I think that's kind of. I had to have like a load of these layers and all that to really make it stand out, like come off of the page and come off of the canvas. Yeah, I don't know whether that's something that he did on purpose or whether that's just like, yeah, just something because he's like, if she moves now, it's not going to be the same painting as it was two seconds ago. And I kind of respect that because, yeah, it's just mm-hmm. capturing the right essence of what something's meant to be. And it's true though, like you, you change one aspect of a design or something, and that's it. It's a completely different thing. So I kind of get where he's coming from. And yeah, let's be honest. If you don't have anything to work from except the reference that's right in front of you, like if you're going to paint an apple and it takes you like a week to paint the apple, the apple's dead by the time you've like mm-hmm. half painted the fucking thing. You know what I mean? Like I'm I, still I, an I get apple, it. Not a rock. There's a there's a very uh, big sense of urgency when he's like painting and stuff. But um, I think that works quite well in his favour because his works are like really, really cool. I mean, there are well, some that are a bit like, unique, you know. Yeah, but you see, like, oh, do you know what? It, it sounded, it sounded, it was sounds so bad of it. But like, there was like the scenes where he was, um, I don't know what museum it is, but he's he's in this museum, and you see all these like. Ren- Renaissance paintings yeah, and stuff. Yeah, you see Coldplay's Viva La Vida. Yeah, you do see Coldplay's <laughs> Viva La Vida in its big, massive glory. And I was like, this is the kind of stuff that I really love looking at because not only are they like like massive, but mm. you see like the, the hyper detailed. Yeah, like the hyper well. detailed. They're like proper, uh, like they're like all cracked because of like how old they are. Yeah. And um, what I like the most about it is that this is going to sound so bad, but like people back then had so much more talent when you think about like, cause a lot of them would have to mix their own like paint colors and like the, the amount of time it would take to just paint that. And then you obviously don't have any reference material either. Like they're just, I don't know how the fuck they even painted them. Mm-hmm. Like, I really don't. And like, I think there's so much more talent in rent. Like rent, I can't even fucking say that place. Yeah. There's so much more talent in those paintings than I've seen in anything that you get today. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll be a lot dead of those serious. paintings probably took like months to paint. Like, y- they're like, years, most day, of them. Every yeah. day without a break. Like, Some of them are like, they span entire walls. Yeah. They're and, fucking huge. And, and it's mad. And like, they're so beautiful and they look so real as well. Like, obviously, obviously, like, not quite photographic, but like, as close to with a paintbrush you yeah. can get. But then I love that scene where he, like, Van Gogh goes into this museum mm. or like this art gallery. He like takes a few looks at these paintings. He's like, all right, and then he fucks off. And he doesn't really spend all that long looking at them. I'm a bit, I'm a bit like that though. Like I, when I go to a museum or a gallery, I'm very happy with just kind of looping yeah. around and going, I've seen it now. But I like, I like to get up. Like I like what um, what he did in the film was that he kind of got up quite close to it and then kind of like. Mm-hmm. Out again, and I'm a bit like that. I do that Once I've lot. seen it, I've yeah. seen it. Like my dad would stand there and like read the fucking like placards and stuff. I'm like, I don't give a shit about yeah, that. I, do that I like who's. I'll be like, okay. I like. Sometimes I'll jot down the name of the person like who's done it, 
and then I'll go look at other paintings and stuff. But I won't stand there and read about their life because I, I just don't give a shit, to be honest. And they'll probably say that about me if I ever got famous one day. They'll be like, I don't give a fuck about her. And I'll yeah. be like, you know fair enough. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I remember when we went to um, the Tate Modern a couple of years ago, there was a lot of the pieces I just looked at and then moved on. But there were yeah. definitely a few pieces where I just like stood there and just kind of looked at it for a while. Yeah, there many Especially of the artists that did those, though. Salvador Dali, there was a couple of his pieces there where I was he's like, oh my master. God. I mean, to, yeah, to yeah. be fair, he's... like mostly the surreal stuff where yeah. it's like so crazy and there's so much going on that you, you know, kind well, of have I'll to be look honest, at. I didn't... I don't think I paid much attention to who did anything. Like, the only one that I remember in recent memory that I actually took note of um, was an exhibition by Jenny Holzer. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, I love her work so much. Like, it's mostly just um, LED lighting with like political like statements across oh, them yeah, yeah, I know. oh they're fucking gorgeous like I, I, i'm a big fan of like led lighting as well so like where, when i saw it i was like oh, i need to go to that i need to go yesterday so i like <laughs> just went <laughs> i love that kind of shit though like um i know andy warhol had an exhibition there once yeah and well, don't that was get when me wrong, we went but we didn't go to it i like andy warhol but fucking hell am i really gonna pay 35 pounds to go and see his artwork no yeah, i'll be grip, honest Andy. like it i could just google it <laughs> and it, no but the, yeah that's the thing like it's not the fact that it's not good but it's like there are other places that i could probably go and see it and not have yeah. to worry about paying for it like google whereas images is free andy yeah like even jenny's exhibition was free and she's you know, not even in the same calibre mm-hmm. as someone as Andy Warhol, but like, I don't know, it's one of those things that I feel like you kind of pick and choose uh, what kind of artists work, but I feel like more people should kind of like appreciate art um, as a medium, but I see why people don't, because you do go places like the Tate Modern, and then, right, so let's think about the uh, the sexy Viva La Vida paintings and the uh, Van Goghs, and then you go to the Tate Modern and it's a fucking like black dot on a canvas and i'm like yeah. this is why people don't appreciate There's art because of this room of just blank canvases yeah that pisses me off and uh, the thing is i i respect it because if i really wanted to become a famous artist i could have done it but i didn't do it and i didn't think of it and someone else was smart enough to do it and got famous doing it fair enough i respect that i really do but this is why people don't respect the arts because they see shit like that and they go I could have done that. Especially Just give me a crayon. Art. Yeah, especially uh, modern art, I think. Yeah, modern yeah. art is mostly bullshit. And I'll be totally honest. I like modern art, but it's mostly bullshit. I don't know, is it? Because it's it's like, it's whatever you get from it, right? You might not like that room full of blank canvases, but to somebody else, they walk in and they're like, no, maybe that, something that, else happens to them. That's what I'm getting at, though. This is what a lot of people don't like the arts because I don't think they appreciate like what what you can get out of it like when i say it's bullshit it's mostly because it's so subjective that you could make anything i'm air quoting now anything into like a piece of art like and that's how it started in the first place um dali went in with a fucking like porcelain bloody like uh was it one of those urinals yeah shoved it on the ground and everyone was like, whoa, this is a great piece of art. And he was like, oh, I literally just shoved that in there. It's not even a piece of art. And that's how this shit started. Yeah. And then that's why you get Damien Hirst fucking uh, freezing cows in formaldehyde and all that kind of shit. This is why. No, he's a madman. Oh, yeah. That. He... he did the Drake album. Oh, yeah, he did, didn't he? What the fuck was he's that about? He's a multifaceted man. Yeah. Oh no, but yeah, the ones that he does with like the butterflies and stuff are gorgeous though. Like he's he's got some talent in there. It's just I a lot of it is not uh, great. Damien Hurst piece where he put the decaying remains of a cow's head in a box. Yep. And then like a bunch of flies in the box with it. Yep. And they were just eating the cow's head. Yeah, and this and there was remind, blood everywhere. Yeah, this kind of brings me back to um like make it it's like making art statements but without having to do any actual art that sounds really bad but like um there's a woman called anya anna oh shit i can't remember her name but she basically did a whole room full of like um gerberas or poppies or some sort of like red flower and it was like a whole room just full of them and then over like the course of like an amount of time like they all just like 
uh, like dying and it was just basically meant to be like this uh, symbol of like uh, femininity and like life and death and like cycles and stuff I did like a whole um uh, a level project on it. I'm gonna have to find her at some point. Mm. She she was cool, but like I said, you know, I'm on fucking art ramble again. Like guys, yeah. I need to stop picking art about a films because this yeah. is what I'm doing. But, <laughs> well, yeah, about, right, okay, about sorry. This movie in like 20 minutes. <laughs> sorry, getting back to uh, Van Gogh it is basically what I'm trying to get is like um, he just wasn't appreciated because I just mm. don't think people were ready for the type of art that he was going for. But now he's immortal, right? Yeah, and now it's like spanned into because there's so many different art movements. I don't think there's even one going right now. Maybe modern art is actually the only movement that is currently a thing because you know you obviously get post impressionist you get pop art you get um surrealism that kind of thing yeah. i don't think there's an another one hard to tell what the movement is when you're in it unless it's marvel movies boo boo van gogh should have been in the era van gogh, of the new marvel, marvel movie, movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it was like uh, was it in that episode of doctor who where he like saw yeah. his own painting and he was like holy shit I mean, that was cool i like that a lot yeah that's I, I kept thinking about that when I was mm. watching this, and I was like, "That's what I was thinking that about is as well." A fantastic fucking episode. That is that one of the only show. episodes I really like. The only thing they fucked up was that they put an alien in it, and I don't know that they should have. <laughs> they put an alien. I've, I must have blanked that out. Like that is. I guess it was like, supposed one. to be like a manifestation of his insecurities and his anxieties and his uh, mental illness. But oh, it was like, like another. Thing. They also did just like CG and Alien in there, and I don't know if they should have done that. Yeah, that I feel like with a show like Doctor Who, you can Maybe just like do a thing where they go into the past and meet a famous person, and that's that. That's oh, one yeah, of the yeah, best Maybe... ones they've done. Yeah, maybe they, they meet an actual a... person from history. Yeah, they it did that with Doctor Shakespeare. Didn't they? <laughs> with what? Shakespeare. Yeah, they There's did that with Shakespeare. They did with Rosa Parks. Fucking so did a lot of Charles Dickens. He Dickens was in an episode. Yeah, yeah they could have just yeah they could have just left that. But yeah, they must have assumed it wasn't. But that is a uh, lovely episode, and it does enough. get to a lot of what uh, Eternity's Gate uh, tackles in the character as mm -hmm. well. Um, the character, I guess. I mean, you can only kind of portray him as a character. He's like, there is so much we didn't know about the guy. And, yeah, because he's like, real, but he's not really real to any of us, if that makes what sense. What I found in, in, in at Eternity's Gate was that uh, something I thought about while I was thinking about the Doctor Who episode was that in that episode, they do a lot of uh, trying to hammer in like he took his paintings and then he painted over his paintings and just like did whatever they didn't oh, yeah. do that in this and I don't I feel like if he actually did do that then they probably should have yeah, shown did, that they just found uh, one of his pieces recently didn't they yeah, yeah was, they like, found it in the back of another back painting of another yeah. one. Mm -hmm. so if he did that I feel like that's some kind of a missed opportunity to not have included it in this yeah yeah, I think, I think that's... Because that's... this came after the Doctor Who episode. <laughs> I'm not saying they should have referenced yeah. that episode when they were making this movie, but... Uh, yeah. This is a good episode. The Doctor I mean, should have showed up. Yeah. It, is, it is kind of fascinating to think up, about yeah. that. Like, Because uh, he was always, him doing always got that. the sense that he loved every painting that he was doing, but I don't know if that's actually what he was like. Do you know what? Maybe. And I've only just had this thought because you've literally just, just uh, mentioned it. But could it also be the theory that, of course, like, you know, he loved all his paintings or whatever, but like, he was also really poor. Like, maybe he wanted to paint something, but he didn't have another yeah, didn't canvas. Have to, yeah, so probably. maybe he painted over. I don't know. Maybe that's what he done. did. Yeah, I know that one that was found was like an earlier draft of one of his self portraits. Do you know yeah. what? I know, I swear. I swear there's like I don't I I don't know this for a fact, but I swear there's like that rumor that he like did his self portrait like a million times because he like hated them, probably or something, because mm -hmm. he's got quite a few of them that are like finished, but I'm pretty sure there's like loads of them because he just like <laughs> just did them over and over. I guess it is kind of easy to do your own portrait in it if you can get a mirror and paint yeah. yourself. It makes yeah, sense. I don't know. I was like, he, like he was asking people, "Can I paint you?" There was like that one part where like asked that, oh, that lady, paint you? Yeah. I'll, I'll pay you if I can paint you. Mm. That was kind of a weird, awkward scene. That was kind of sad. Like he was like forcing her into this position. Yeah, and, like, she clearly didn't want to do it, but like he was clearly ill. You know, it was a, mm. that was quite upsetting. Um, one thing we haven't talked about is Willem Dafoe. I know we're like this is a movie about like, and the main character is played by Willem Dafoe. But like, what do we think of him? Because I thought he was maybe a bit too old to play the character, but he yeah. was. He was like fucking fantastic. Yeah. He was almost double the age. He was yeah, like he's sixty two. Mm -hmm. And that's why and I was like, Van Gogh was supposed to be what in his thirty seven. Yeah. So I was like, 
googling it like just for the uh, just for the sake of like um because i was looking up um oscar isaac's character or yeah. whatever and yeah and then it came up with like Willem Dafoe is 62 in this movie and he actually died at 37. Yeah. And I was like, what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, Oscar Isaac's character is like supposed to be 10 years older than Van Gogh, whereas mm-hmm. in like real life, I think Willem Dafoe is like 20 years younger or something. Yeah, yeah. no, 20, yeah, it doesn't make younger. any sense because, um, yeah, the, um, the Oscar Isaac's um, guy, he died like 20 years after Van Gogh did. But he looks so much younger because he was 52 when he died, but Van Gogh was like 37. He was trying to like, like mentor it, Van yeah. Gogh, right? So it seemed weird that like he none was taking sense. advice from this like really younger guy when surely he should have had that a bit more experience w- w- with the Van Gogh yeah, character. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's, I guess it also may, my, maybe it comes down to the fact that Willem Dafoe kind of does look like Van Gogh. He does. So he maybe, really yeah, maybe that's does. why. He really yeah, does. he is great in the role, I think. <laughs> I just think he's a bit old. Do yeah. you think. It would be sadder or less sad if they had cast somebody who was younger. Because when he gets like abused by the townspeople, it's horrific because it's like an old guy and it's Willem Dafoe and he's like this really sweet man. But if it was like a younger guy, would it have been sadder? Or not, it have been I, feel, sad? I feel like I don't feel like it. Would, yeah, I feel like it would be less sad. I feel like it'd be more like when you see like God, an old man so being bullied. It's horrendous, yeah. right? <laughs> That's one of the worst things you could see in a movie. Yeah, maybe... The, Put and, an old man being bullied in there and yeah. like, I'm out of there, man. I'm out of there as quick as I can. And it's kind of, Yeah, it's kind of... It is really weird to see, like, Oscar Isaac's meant to be older than Van Gogh, but he's clearly way younger than Van Gogh, and it's really weird. Because even when I looked it up, I was like, oh... This doesn't make yeah, any sense. It's weird, but I didn't. It didn't take me out of the movie all that much. No, to, no, no. Do you know fair, what? Because they're so good. I yeah. didn't even notice until the second time round. I was like, "Wait a minute, Van Gogh's yeah. like meant to be Howard?" Because I, I mean, you probably could get away with saying that maybe Van Gogh looks like he could have been in his late forties, early fifties, maybe. Yeah, I mean, if you really want to push that Defoe narrative, Van doesn't look super old no no that's what i mean like if you like when i saw he was 62 i was like he's fucking 62 Mm -hmm. like he's not a young looking man don't get me wrong but he's not an old looking man does that make sense like if someone told me that willem dafoe was like 56 in that i would have been like okay i wouldn't have questioned it like at all this is kind of the first movie i thought willem dafoe looked like really beautiful i was like this guy this man is like stunning yeah, he, he's, he's such got a, a good striking look. Guy. He's he's a very like interesting looking guy. He's oh yeah, I don't think he's attractive. It's not like Green he's Goblin very... type of thing. Yeah, he's. I, I, <laughs> I mean, don't know what it like, is. That's the perfect guy to play the Green Goblin because he looks like a goblin. But in this, it's like, he looks like that's a goblin. The, that's the perfect guy to play Van Gogh because he looks like Van Gogh and like this sweet dude. You know, his eyes are so blue, so piercing. Yeah, and, and I think like... Van Gogh himself, like when you, I mean, obviously we've only got like his um portraits to mm-hmm. go back on because there weren't even like any like photographs they should have taken a photograph of that like, guy he looks old yeah so like it but makes maybe sense maybe that's what he's kind of saw himself as that's all you're getting from that right it's like oh his, yeah because there's no pictures of him yeah 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 maybe he saw himself who, as an old guy yeah, yeah. maybe yeah Di- maybe he didn't look like that at all yeah maybe who, not maybe he was just ginger but that's it I yeah. don't know if anybody else oh, I mean you said that are there any photos what's his of- face did can't be a- portrait of him yeah in a so beret, but it's like kind of si- similar like a, yeah i don't know there, there's like similar characteristics like you know like the hair color and like the shape of his face and stuff but like when you paint yeah. yourself and you draw yourself you put a lot of what you feel about yourself into that so hmm. when you're looking at a painting that van gogh uh, painted of himself that's not just like a self-portrait it's like here's what he thought of himself Right. I would like to see a picture of him. I'm really upset. There's literally a picture of his brother, but not of him. Yeah, I think he died before. Oh, no, I have got a picture of him. Ooh. He died and then they invented the camera. Yeah. But I have got a picture of him here, technically. Yeah, I don't want to show us. Oh, look at him. I got him. Yeah. That him? Apparently. Right. Yeah. Well, there we go. So he didn't die before the camera? No. He was there. He just didn't well, want yeah, to say Well, yeah, no, because look, apparently there's another one. Hey, I've seen that picture yeah. before. Yeah. And he actually, he looks young. Well, actually, this could be a, a really, 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 really old photo, but he does kind of look quite young compared to what he's painted himself as. Does that make sense? 
Mm -hmm. Like, he doesn't look that old. Like, in his pictures, I would say he was, like, a fucking old man. Like, you know where Willem Dafoe's going at in this fucking hat that he's, uh... Yeah. That he's got. I was like, I was... When I was watching this film, they had the uh, portrait of him, but like I said, he's had so many that it's not the same one that I'd seen. And I was like, he's wearing that hat from the self-portrait. And I was like, wait a minute, no, he's not. And I realized it's a different self-portrait entirely. Yeah. Where he's wearing that, yeah, this fucking stupid straw hat thing that he wears. You didn't like his straw hat? No, it suited him. I liked it, actually. It was, it was, yeah. it was, it was cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, it's just yeah. really fascinating looking at him now because I've never seen a photo of him yeah. until just now. I like seeing all the things that I remembered from his paintings in this movie that they tried to depict in live action um, and also from that movie, Loving Vincent. At the end of the movie, he's like in his deathbed where, it, where he's been shot. I thought that looked very similar. I thought it was just like, that's probably what it was, like how his room looked like because it's like identical yeah, in this probably, movie and yeah. Loving Vincent. I feel like... Probably yeah, I can't imagine he had a lot of possessions That's, to be honest. That scene where the the guy's like asking why he did it and stuff is like basically the exact same scene mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, it's it is strange because I actually didn't love loving Vincent. Vincent, I just thought it, it was it was, cool it was a at. stunning movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hand painted all of it, but the story itself did not grip me all that much. Yeah, but this one actually really did, and I just like. You're so involved with this guy and like what his life was about, and it's it's easy to latch on to a guy who's kind of beaten down a bit, and you you want to vote, you want to root for the underdog, you know. Everybody's yeah. like just torturing him all the time. It's that's the guy you want to be in the corner of. Yeah, I felt like loving Vince, and like there was a few bits where it just like kind of felt like just like generic biopic sort of stuff, like especially how that film. Um, ends with a shot of Starry Night in the Sky and that um, Don McLean song Vincent plays and it was like it's a great song but it's like really cheesy what the one that's like Starry Starry Night yeah that one <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah you don't get anything like that in this film no. it does feel very straight it doesn't like it never feels like generic or like it's trying to be like other biopics it all feels very unique and like there's not really a lot I've seen like this Especially in like the way mm. it like depicts his mental health, like especially when it's like deteriorating later on. Yeah. There's like sequences where it's almost like it's from his perspective, where like the editing's just going crazy and like. You're talking multiple... about that like batshit bit where he's like in that garden and he's like falling over yeah, and stuff. stuff. That's not so not weird. just that scene, but like there's like multiple conversations where there's like what he's saying and what the other person's saying is like in yeah. like into his brother's house. overlapping. Oh and, yeah. Like, yeah. I thought Things he was repeating. like he had trouble like computing what people were saying to him in like the moment, and then like part of that conversation would come back to him later on, and he'd like hear that again, and like he'd actually perceive it. But by that time, it would be a bit too late yeah. to engage with what that conversation was. Mm. Yeah, that's like those sequences were insanely good. Yeah, really great. How they would like overlap the images as well, and like you don't know what he was saying at like what specific time or like who he was saying it to. And, if he was only perceiving what was said to him before in another moment or not. Um, I've never seen, I guess it was trying to depict his um, mental illness in that way or like kind of a schizophrenic episode. But I've never seen it like displayed in any movie quite like this. So no, I mean, either. really original, really interesting. <clears throat> it was also about like a man of mystery and he read Shakespeare a lot. Like, yeah. Oh, Shakespeare writes with mystery. And then the woman says, when I read a story, I like to understand what's written. Ah, there we go. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's not what you... Maybe that's what a lot of people want to take from a painting or like a work of art. They mm. want to be told exactly what to think. But he was not a guy who would spoon feed people. I guess that's not something yeah. people latched onto at that time. Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's another thing of they weren't ready for him. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I think there's like a good parallel between Shakespeare and Van Gogh and how they mm -hmm. kind of just... He probably wasn't They kind of just completely reinvented their mediums. Like, yeah. Shakespeare pretty much reinvented just writing and plays generally. Mm -hmm. um, just like Van Gogh kind of completely changed the entire artistic landscape. Well, someone kind of like has to do it in order to start a, mo uh, like yeah, a movement because... I don't know, it was the same when um, I can't even fucking think of another artist now because my brain's fried. But like when, when George Lucas came out with Star Wars. 
Yeah, why not? He was like the Van Gogh of the <laughs> 70s. Sci-fi <laughs> world. <laughs> I mean, say what you will, that film did kind of change the entire exactly. film yeah. landscape. Yeah, like it, it, it happens with like any medium. It just someone has to be brave enough to take the risk on mm. whether it's going to like pull off or not. And Van Gogh, not in his lifetime, didn't, but he did pull it off, yeah. actually. But I, he even knew I, that, yeah, though. He knew I he both appreciate what Van Gogh did, and I love what he did. But yeah. with Shakespeare, it's like, I appreciate what he did. I can't understand a fucking word this guy's saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I think that's more a product of the time, though, isn't it? Like, that's that's less about no. Shakespeare than it is the fact that he just lived in ye olde England. <laughs> Making up <laughs> stupid words that nobody understands. <laughs> or like, but he was lauded. He was praised, yeah. you know, in his time. He was he was a man of his time. But Van Gogh was clearly not appreciated in his time. And there's mm. that really heartbreaking part where he dies and then like his corpse is in the room oh, and there's surrounded by paintings. a bunch of his paintings and people are buying them oh, people want his paintings no, 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 no. now yeah. and it's Don't. so that, upsetting that's yeah. not pisses me off because it was like i said i've had this conversation on the podcast before but it just goes to show once again you have no value until you die because you obviously can't paint mm. you are now limited edition i don't Stuff know like if that, that was pissing. actually what happened it probably like, probably no. not it was cool shot no. though i'll be honest he like, was trying I, to get I, across, I liked it like, like he, he was... wasn't appreciated in his time and he had to die for people to understand what he was really yeah like. it's yeah. sad how yeah. many artists and stuff are like that like the musician mm. nick drake um one of my favorite musicians he put out three albums that were huge financial failures and then mm. died and like 20, 30 years later his music like suddenly became really huge. This is, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's, uh, sometimes it's just, some people are just a product of not their time, you know? Yeah. Did you like when Mix Melson shows up? Mix Melson. Yeah. I did. Okay, yeah, Mads was, Mikkelsen. I forgot he was in it. Cute little priest up. man. Yeah. Where he's like, your works are Kind of terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> like, he like goes up to him and he's like trying to <laughs> console him. And he's just like, your paintings suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what? So you think you have this God because, no, you gift because God wants to keep you in misery. And he's like, no, <laughs> I never thought about that. And that yeah, kind of like, just, I paint for people yeah. who are not born yet. And he says, why do you call yourself a painter? Says, I am my painting. Because I paint. That's all it is. Do you know how fucking boss man that line was? Like, when he said it, I was like, fucking Van Gogh just said he is his paintings. Like, it's such a stupid, like, throwaway line. But, like, oh, it was like, like, if you, I don't know, like, I feel like, you know, cr uh, creative people, may maybe just me, actually. But I feel like it was just, like, so yeah, true. Yeah, I mean, a lot of creative it felt people, real. like, they are their Yeah, what they, they are they their creations. I'm like, oh, God, I fucking love you, Van Gogh. Oh, we would have gotten along. Once upon yeah. a time. Well, when you create something, you put part of yourself into it. Right? Yeah, and I think that kind of like, this is going to sound really stupid, but when he had cut off his own ear and then they were like in this room with the, oh, I don't fucking know, this geezer who's like, why did you do that then? <laughs> and, he, and I got from it kind of the idea that he was like, he doesn't value himself that much, so he was giving away parts of himself to like give to other people. Like he, you know, like when you paint a painting, you are giving aspects of yourself to someone else yeah. and letting them in that way. I feel like that's kind of what he was doing there. Also, from the fact that he's also like not fucking well was also a, a big stand, uh, standalone fact there. But I, I think there was maybe a bit more, um, if you want to look at it in a philosophical kind of way, I think maybe there's something there. Yeah, well, they were saying like, um, why'd you do it? And he was like, I don't know. I don't remember doing it. And that's like, they're like, why yeah. did you shoot yourself? He's like, I don't know. I don't remember. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> How hard can you beat this guy into the ground? Yeah. It was like, what's this? Artists suffer for their art. Like, this was the original sufferer. <laughs> yeah. He really, he <laughs> really, really was, though, did. like, legit. This was, I mean, we were talking about that movie, um, The Electrical Life of Louis Wayne, a couple of episodes ago. He also suffered that for was his like art, to be fair. That was a big... Part of that was like, I uh, the more depressed he got, the better his paintings became. Mm. But I said in that episode, like you shouldn't have to sacrifice your entire person to fuel some kind of drive to be a better artist. You can do that just by getting better, and you you don't have to suffer for it. I don't like the stigma that like the suffering artist is the better artist because that's just not true. But there, there are so I, th I think it's um, one of those you know those things that is kind of like 
a normal thought of rationale or whatever because it's happened so many times that people just kind of go I mean there must be a correlation here like do you know so people just assume it's something to be beholded like oh I'm gonna make myself so depressed so I can make something so great or like Kanye West I don't want to take my medication because I can make the best thing ever when I'm not medicated it's that kind of stupid shit it's like mm-hmm. we don't have to be like this man we can just get some inspiration somewhere and make something cool like sometimes it just happens like you ever like been in bed right and you're partially asleep and then you wake up and you're like fuck I have this great idea or like this great uh I don't know so, like a phrase or something you got fuck I better uh, get up and write this down I know I've seen Chris do it before but not when he's a, yeah. been asleep like he'll come out the shower or something he'd be like I just thought of something and then he'll like write it down and yeah. I'm like that's what I yeah, feel like, like it should whip be. my phone out and record like a melody yeah. on a voice mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes it makes sense like that seems more accurate to today's perceptions of not suffering for your art but you know making art as opposed to god all of my loved ones have died this must be the only way i could be a great artist yeah i've had like multiple days where i'm just like having a shower or so and suddenly i have an idea and i literally cancel everything i'm doing that day and like write a song because it's like i gotta do it now while it's there yeah it's the inspiration (laughs) i think sometimes that is you know more prevalent in making a piece of uh something than uh having to be Sad as shit, because I think yeah. that's just. Yeah, I think I that's hate the when thing inspiration that needs to strikes and you're like trying to get to sleep, and you're like, you ought to drag yourself out of bed and be like, oh, fuck's sake, <laughs> I'll write this down. <laughs> it's true, though. I think that's probably why Chris has, gets his phone, because it's like right next to him instead of like writing it down. Because yeah. I know some people actually prefer to like. Oh, yeah, but I like, like turn my phone on, click on an app, <laughs> and I record myself. It's like, oh, man. Because <laughs> usually what I'm thinking of is like song lyric melodies or like. Uh, actual lyrics and i gotta like if i've it's worse <laughs> if i have to like type it out and it's like oh i'm so tired <laughs> just, just want to go to sleep yeah that is and, true uh one part that really hit me where I was like it was like right at the end and it was um this book that he had drawn like so many drawings in to give oh, to his friend pad, yeah they just chuck it on a shelf and then this uh title comes up at the end where it says 126 years later, the drawings in the book were found. I was like, that fucking killed me. Yeah, they like, found yeah, them in 2016. Sake. These people, yeah. who, like, he drew that for them, and they didn't even get it in the end. And, like, and it wasn't even found until 126 yeah. years later. That's fucking insane. Oh, yeah, it's so crazy. upsetting. I mean, yeah, it's actually really sad. I mean, I guess the only good thing to come from that is that it was found, if that makes sense. Like, could you imagine, like it just like getting destroyed and no one had ever seen yeah. it? Like I feel like that that's like crazy. It just to makes me. you wonder how much more of his work is out there. That there's hasn't probably loads, been probably tons. Well, think about it. If we're finding stuff on the back of canvases, there's but like I, I was, I'm telling you guys, yeah, there's probably like <laughs> thousands of paintings. Mm-hmm. Like, if we're still discovering his stuff in 2022. Like yeah, there's thousands of them. Like, I think. But who's gonna like scratch away at fucking starry night that's to see what that- was under that? You know, nobody's going to do that. No, no one should do that, to be honest. I would love to see the Starry Night in person. Oh, yeah. But it's all the way at the MoMA. Yeah, I would love to go to all these different other countries. I want to go to the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'm actually more surprised that the Amsterdam Museum doesn't have the Starry Night, but the MoMA does, and I don't get that. Yeah, when I went to Amsterdam, I think my grandparents went to the Van Gogh Museum, and we went to Anne Frank House instead. That's fucked up. I mean, I don't I mean, one one person's preference, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that was your brother's preference, though, wasn't it? He's the one who wanted to go. I wanted to go there. I thought it would Mm -hmm. be interesting. And was it? Yeah, it was really fucking depressing. Yeah, I bet it was. Yeah, I'd rather go to the uh, Van Gogh Museum <laughs> myself and get inspired. But then I feel again, like that's depressing in a different way. Uh, yeah, but yeah, and then again, uh, remember, we're not going to take away these uh, historical uh, things that we need to go and see because they were real and they were fucking horrible. But, but come on, yeah, I'd rather go to the Van Gogh Museum. Let's be I wasn't real. into art at that point, so no. Yeah. To be fair, I don't think I've never not been into art. Yeah, I've been going to like eight and a tape on a kid. I, I really f- love those. I love like, the tape. Those are, like, I really art do. Galleries. I try to go 
whenever I can. Would love to go to more like the the of the bigger ones, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of time spent and yeah, like, money um, and all that. Yeah, maybe one day I would love to. I want to go back to the Sashi Gallery. That one's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would love to go. It's, it's really like, yeah, it's really weird and it's like proper like modern art. Like not, and we're not even talking like you know dots on canvases anymore. We're talking mm. like full rooms full of like oil and air like nice. no joke it's fucking weird there and i love it like i went there once and there's like this massive uh it was like a really small room where it's just like uh little bits of like led like lighting and i was like i love this place mm-hmm. yeah yeah Some lovely art out there guys go and see <laughs> it yeah go to your local art gallery yeah we need yeah. to go to that light show thing oh yeah but that's that's taken so long to try we tried to book that ages ago yeah, it's a bit of an arse ache. <laughs> it's a bit of an arse ache. Speaking of um, so long, we've been going for quite a while. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. Let's, let's, uh, a few let's... things I'll reel off. Is yeah. I love how the camera was being used at, in yeah. the movie. It's very like handheld, hel- handheld, very intimate. And I think that's what the movie should have been because it was from his perspective, a lot of it. I love how they filmed the hallucination scene of the way angled the camera over his face and he'd like, look up at the sky. All these images were like flash on the screen. I just thought that's the way to do it. You know? And I said when we were talking about um, Louis Wayne biopic, if you're going to make a movie about an artist, it has to be arty. And this was fucking insanely arty. Yeah, definitely. The cinematography was like off the charts. Mm. Off the fucking charts. It was so lovely to look so, at. Yeah, so many it lovely was like a colors. Window. And they filmed it in such a way where it was like you're looking through a window. That's what I kind of got. I felt it. like I was like looking at a Van Gogh painting the whole time because they have the mm-hmm. similar color palettes yeah. of just like yellow, blue, yeah. green. It's just yeah. sexy. It was just such a nice looking movie. Also, love how they incorporated French in it. Like Willem Dafoe and Oscar Isaac, they spoke French in it quite a bit. And that was what I was kind of worried about. I'm like, you're going to set this in France, but they're not going to talk French at all. Yeah, when they, but they do. Uh, yeah, I wish they kind of did a bit more, but then yeah, yeah. Or if they're not fluent in French, then okay, whatever. Apparently Van Gogh's French was really bad anyway. Well, actually, mm-hmm. yeah, because he's, he's from Holland, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a bit of that, yeah. I guess, was the way to bridge that. Yeah, probably, sort of yeah, because if your French is going to be really shit, then what's the point in doing it in French? Yeah, I guess it makes well, sense. Maybe I don't have a problem with that then, problem solved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also like the music. Yeah, reminds well, me a lot of the music from Minecraft. Okay. The whole time I was like, oh, this is like Minecraft. I was thinking of piano, so I don't know what you uh That's the Minecraft. music in Minecraft. It's like piano. I wouldn't know I'm not well. a virgin that plays Minecraft. Sorry, any virgins that play Minecraft. Yeah, we're not fucking virgins that play stupid, lame <laughs> Minecraft. <laughs> 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 Podcast is cancelled, boys. Yeah, a lot of like really just beautiful violin and piano and like scenes where they just like wouldn't have any dialogue or what yeah. sound it would just be the, the music yeah. so lovely it's so nice he just wanted to paint light and sunlight and that's, that's what we get from his paintings and that's, yeah. that's fantastic fascinating yeah should we rate yeah mix melson's <laughs> mix mel mix <laughs> you said it first you said it you made that up and yeah. you don't even know what how it is you don't even know how how even what it is even. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I really liked this movie. I thought it was really interesting. Um, really well made. Great acting. Just an interesting portrayal of this famous character, I think. Give it like seven mixed meltons out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> you, he doesn't even have to say it either, and I love that. Yeah. Uh, I'll cap it off with a lovely quote that he said. He said, there's a lot of destruction and failure at the door of a successful picture. Identify that. I identify with that a lot, I think. Um, I'll give it eight Mix Melsons out of ten. Nine Mix Melsons. Yeah. I think I'm a bee. <laughs> I want to check out some of the director's other movies. He did yeah. The Diving Bell and The Butterfly, which I've heard is good. It is good. Yeah, he did a Basque movie as well. which Yes. Uh, and be let's be honest, guys. The uh, next by free Jeffrey throw Wright is... In it. <laughs> let's be honest. I, I, I've, that's, all, that's already on my radar, so... Uh... Nice. That's that. Another free for all for the books. I say it's the seventh one we've done. Is it only been seven? I feel like regarding all the ones that we did in lockdown, which I don't count because that yeah, was out like of necessity. Thirty of them, whatever it was. Yeah, this is like the seventh one. Oh wow! <laughs> cool. Uh, we're not here next week. We're going away forever, as we've said. 
Yeah, um, me and Max are finally running away together. Yeah. So, so episode 90 <laughs> will be out on the 21st of August. Um, yes. We might be able to discuss Nope. We might have seen Nope by then. So Yeah, hopefully. That'll be, that'll be out in Maybe. the UK by the time we record. Um, we'll try to see that. Anyway, we've got a wheel to spin. What's, what's gonna, it's going to tell us what we're going to watch next episode. I thought that went on for a while, you know. 1980s movies. Okay. Okay. We're going to watch some 1980s movies picked from the years 1980 to 1989. We will remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, yeah. We've got social media. <laughs> oh, yeah. Check in the description for those because we'll have picked by then. and You'll be able to see those. Social media is YouTube. We've got that. The Sunday Movie Marathon. Subscribe, please. Please subscribe. Twitter <laughs> is at Sunday Movie Pod. Facebook is at Sunday Movie Marathon and Letterboxd is at Sunday MM for those inclined. Capital S, capital MM. Remember to or like Instagram. Oh, we've got fucking Instagram as well now. We, we do. do. We made an Instagram. Oh my boys. god, I gotta write that down. Yes, Instagram. Subscribe to that or follow that. Whatever you do on there. Uh, um, that's at Sunday Movie Pod. We've got a new logo and all that. It's all going off. Go and do yeah. that. Go and just do it. Just do it. I'm watching you. Do it. Uh, subscribe, rate the podcast five stars on Spotify. You mm. can do that. Please do it. Great. Any last words? <laughs> Goodbye. So e -I -E -I. Farewell. Later. <laughs> I was going to finish that, but I've forgotten how it, how it went. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who.